Council Member Becerra, I do see that you're on on the line, and Mayor, and we, Mayor, we're we're ready. Sarmiento, Sarmiento is on as well. Okay, thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, why don't you call the roll to make sure we have a quorum, and then, and we'll pro I'll proceed from there. Go ahead, please. Council Member Becerra. Here. Council Member Mendoza. Council Member Peñalosa. Here. Council Member Sarmiento. Here. Council Member Solorio. Mayor Pro Tem Viegas. Here. And Mayor Pulido. I am here. We have and a quorum. Madam Clerk, before we proceed uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance, do you want to make an announcement uh, for uh, callers? Yes, um, I would like to ask all the callers who are on hold right now to please make sure that um, you dial star six when you have been unmuted. It's individual, so as soon as we dial, when we unmute you, you will need to dial star six in order for you to be heard. And you will have three minutes to speak at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. With that, now I want you all to please stand um, and we'll uh, conduct a Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance, to, allegiance to the flag to the flag of the United States of America, of the United States of America, United States of America the Republic for which it stands, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, which it stands, one nation under God, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. For all. Thank you, everybody. Now, if you can remain standing, is Jerry Hill on the line, our police chaplain? Let's go ahead and uh, pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and, and just the beautiful day that you brought us. And Lord, we ask tonight that you'll bless our meeting. And Lord, we ask that um, you would just continue to, to bless our mayor, to bless the council members as they, they navigate the, the difficult waters of a pandemic, Lord. And we pray that you would keep them healthy, that you would watch over their families. And we pray the same, Lord, for our city manager and the city staff that have kept everything running, Lord. We ask that you would continue to bless them, continue to watch over them. And Lord, we also ask that you would give each of us an, an extra uh, measure of patience as we deal with one another and, and we deal with the, the difficulties of what we are in the middle of uh, in this pandemic. And Lord, we also ask that you would just bless each and every resident of our city. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you for that. Um, before we proceed, I just want to ask the city attorney, is there anything to report out of closed session, please? Yes, Mayor, thank you. We do have one idle reportable action in the case of State of California versus Selco Partnership um, doing business as Verizon Wireless. I'm really pleased to announce that the City Council unanimously accepted a settlement in the City's favor of $224,000 um, that will be payable to the City. We did receive a direction on the other cases that we discussed this evening, but there's no more reportable action. Thanks for that. Um Madam City Attorney, um, I believe now, Madam Clerk, um, we have some presentations. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council Members, there's a presentation. Yeah, a special presentation by Public Works. Yes. Are we ready to do that, Madam City Manager? Yes, I believe we are. It's actually a joint presentation from the police department and the public works department. And this was in response to an inquiry from um, council members concerning street racing that's been happening in our city. So with that, I will turn it over. I believe Traffic Commander Elms is going to be going first. Please go ahead.
They're queuing up the presentation, Mayor. It will start shortly. Good evening, I'm Chuck Elms. I'm the traffic commander for the Santa Ana Police Department. Uh, we have seen a recent increase in street racing uh, and intersection takeovers by organized groups in our city. In an effort to uh, address this, we partnered with Public Works and we developed STEERED, Selective Traffic Enforcement Against Reckless Driving and Racing. And it's a three-pronged approach that includes enforcement, engineering, and education. So from an enforcement standpoint, we will have a balanced, a balanced approach of traditional enforcement, technology, and prosecution. Traditional enforcement is our officers out on the streets, stopping these racers, issuing citations, impounding vehicles, and making arrests. We have technology available to us to identify these racers and their vehicles as well as other crimes that are happening uh, during these incidents. We've partnered with the uh, district attorney's office. We've uh, presented our strategy to them and they are supportive. We're also working with our city attorney's office to develop a spectating ordinance which would make it a crime to be a spectator at these street racing events. In an effort to uh, enhance our traditional enforcement, we've partnered with uh, a couple of our allied agencies, the Tustin Police Department and the Irvine Police Department. They're also experiencing uh, street racing uh, increases in their city, and we're looking to expand that, that partnership. To date, we've conducted 17 operations to combat street racing. That has resulted in 254 citations, eight, sorry, 254 citations, eight arrests, and 16 impounds of street racing vehicles. We've also looked at what's been successful for some of our allied agencies. Um, one of the things we're looking at is going after street racers for vandalism, for the damage they do to city roadways. And we've worked with our public works agency to uh, come up with the cost to repair the roadway, and we're confident that we can get a felony vandalism charge uh, for damaging city roadway. And with that, I'll turn it over to William from Public Works. Yes, uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is William Galvez, City Engineer. and I just briefly wanted to tell you about uh, some of the uh, technology that, that we want to, to use. Uh, we will use some of our uh, traffic signals uh, and in conjunction with uh, police, we can record some intersections so we can use some of the technology. There was a slide here that I wanted to show you that had some costs and I guess, it, is it the next one? And uh, some of these costs can be very, very substantial. In a typical industrial area intersection, uh, you can affect about six, six to seven thousand square feet when you're doing these uh, donuts. And so, if you're talking about a a street a intersection that's new, that's a significant significant damage of uh, eighteen thousand uh, dollars. If the street is in is in okay condition, it's still a significant cost of uh, ten thousand dollars. So we've provided these costs so that when a police uh, goes after restitution, we have some costs that are documented. Uh, as far as uh, some of the engineering goes. Uh, we have been working with police uh, to, if we can identify any uh, uh, info with uh, uh, street closures that we can affect, we can close up a street uh, if we know that there's gonna be a, an event uh, taking place. We can also install bot dots. What that is is uh, uh, large domed raised pavement markers. And uh, so we're looking at installation of bot dots in intersections and locations where maybe some of the street racing is taking place. That would make it very, very difficult for cars to, to race and pull donuts. 
One of the programs that we're really excited about, and I think uh, the council's been informed of, is the Rest in Red. Uh, we put a Rest in Red on uh, MacArthur, city limit to city limit, and Alton from Fairview to, uh, to Bristol. What that means is that from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., these signals actually rest in red all the way around. And it's only when uh, the side street triggers the loop does that signal go to green. On the main line, though, if you're going to speed limit and you trigger the advanced loop, if you're going to speed limit or less, by the time you get to the intersection, you will get a green light. So you're able to proceed without having to fully stop. But it prevents a racer that's exceeding the speed limit from just flying down the, uh, the corridor. So we're, we've uh, done before and after tests. And uh, this is certainly something that we're excited about. We might be able to deploy this uh, type of uh, technology in other city corridors. Uh, we've also been uh, collaborating with uh, with the police. I already mentioned the uh, the cameras, but uh, we also want to continue with lane narrowing. We've done that on First Street. Uh, the lane narrowing tends to uh, reduce speed limits on uh, platoons of cars, so we want to continue doing that. Continue pursuing uh, safe routes to school grants, and the lane narrowing will eventually lead to possibly reducing the posted speed limit. We're really excited about conducting our engineering speed survey, which is done every five years. We're going to be awarding a contract this fall to conduct the, uh, the speed surveys in the springtime. And we're hoping that uh, as a result of those speed surveys, we'll be able to reduce the posted speed limits on uh, many of our corridors. And uh, as far as uh, education goes, uh, we purchased four uh, high-tech uh, speed feedback signs in 2018. Uh, uh, two of them were damaged as part of some of these protests that, uh, that we experienced this uh, summer. We repaired those and we're purchasing four more, in addition to a number of other signs that are COVID-related. But these high-tech speed signs actually collect volume and speed data, even when they appear to be off they're running 24-7. So with this information, we would, uh, we would analyze it and share uh, any information that, uh, that the police can use for uh, selective enforcement. And we will continue reaching out to neighborhoods, uh, schools, and neighborhood associations so that we can, uh, so we can help educate the children, families, and adults on the, uh, on the issues and the dangers of uh, speeding. Uh, and that concludes the, uh, our presentation. Uh, the, uh, the PowerPoint has some other highlights on uh, what we will uh, do for, for education. Uh, but at this point, that concludes our presentation. And we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'm sure we're going to have some questions. Uh, who would like to start? Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Becerra. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank staff for that presentation and I appreciate you taking a look at how our city can address the street racing issue that we have. But one thing I do want to clarify is that some of the dangers that we're seeing on our roads is not just street racing. And I think that Public Works and PD has done a great job of focusing on some of those issues. I like, like the bots dots uh, idea where it would really uh, I guess make folks really think twice about trying to do donuts and, and other things in some of our uh, city's intersections. But we do have a lot of lead foots in the city and we have folks that are just not abiding by the posted speed limits. And so when you talk about the rest in red, I think that'll help folks that tend to be law abiding residents. But I think when we talk about other things that we need to do, you know, it's great to see the enforcement that's out there. I, I see it intermittently down on the south end of town, but we've got some streets where I think we're gonna need to see something in regards to more of a public works physical uh, impact to these streets. So I'll take for instance, MacArthur, you know, I would love to see us look at, you know, as we're talking about narrowing lanes, but also incorporating bike lanes. Let's just, you know, if you look at some stretches of MacArthur, you've got lines from the curb out to the number one lane that 
it's just debt space, but it's probably enough room to incorporate at least a class two bike lane. So I'd like to see us try to do that, try to incorporate that and go after grants to really incorporate the full complete streets concept to as many streets as possible. And especially these ones that we see where there are long stretches, there are no traffic signals. Um, I would also like to see staff come back with proposals as far as some of these streets where we could see whether it's traffic circles or, or just something that not having these long stretches. As I've mentioned at previous council meetings, you have streets that really could qualify as drag racing strips because they meet the length criteria and they have no interruptions from one signal to another. So I, I appreciate these efforts. I like the rest in red. I like what we're hearing as far as uh, highlighting the results of these enforcement programs and kind of really showing folks that we are taking this seriously and we are going after offenders. But I think in addition to the education and the enforcement I really hope that Public Works will come back to us at a future council meeting soon to show us some actual ways that we can really physically alter our streets and limit the um, li limit the speeding because, you know, as we know, we we don't have enough police to patrol every single street and watch all of them for whether it's just residents uh, blowing past posted speed limits or actual street racing. So. My, my ask of staff is to really think about what we can do to incorporate slowing, physically slowing down these streets without always having to rely on enforcement. Uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Other comments? Mr. Mayor, this is Councilmember Jose Solorio. A few questions and comments. Yes, please, uh, Councilmember, go ahead. First, I remember we used to have red light cameras, and I know some people thought that the fees were getting higher or this or that, I honestly am thinking it's probably time to bring that back. And I know cost and regs and other things have changed. Maybe as part of a follow-up, if we could get a, a little memo on what red light camera possibilities uh, might be. Uh, because we do have also just a lot of speedster during the day and just people passing red lights and a lot of pedestrian deaths, uh, obviously. I like all the ideas regarding street calming and those uh, red dots or whatever uh, they are. My, the main question I have is uh, more for public works and just kind of coordination. I do know that public works has at least some cameras on major intersections. And so if someone's watching those TVs 24 seven, essentially, I don't know if we do or don't, we'd be able to see congregations occurring and activity occurring that then we could send officers out and now that we're better staffed uh, uh, mitigate it what level of coordination do we do around that or, or or visual observation or do we need more cameras or do we need to uh, hire more people to watch them uh, I mean these things are you know I right in front of main place you know <laughs> I, I drove yesterday by some nice big donuts there at uh, uh, you know uh, you know their kitty corner from uh, from from main place. Uh, so, can you talk about that? Yeah, we, we have uh, 300 signalized intersections, uh -huh. and we have uh, 200 uh, intersections with uh, some sort of video uh, mm -hmm. camera. It's all interconnected with uh, fiber. Mm -hmm. We don't have any monitoring over those cameras, and the cameras we do have don't uh, record unless uh, police or unless we have a reason to to uh, begin a recording. So that's something that we'd have to look into staffing so that we could uh, you know, monitor that. If we had some intel, uh, right. then that would be very helpful. Right. But we have the cameras. I mean, we wouldn't put up cameras unless we thought people were going to look at them from time to time. So that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. We have cameras, the, but we don't ever watch them? The, no, the, the, the cameras are actually for the signal. They're like signal detector oh, okay. cameras. Transportation so, related. Yeah, they're transportation related. So we've been using the, the cameras. They, they detect traffic, but we've uh, sort of used the cameras for other purposes too. So or we could. We're to yeah, maybe staff could think about how can we get some eyeballs on those things for evenings or at least for the you know 20 hot spots i mean amongst us here or others we know again hot spots they tend to be in the same place and maybe those are where we need to figure out if there are cameras there and then have people watch the cameras uh, and yet if we get tips ahead of time we can even uh, 
staff there because that's where I do feel that there's some engineering PD coordination that would be that would be helpful and then I like the impounds and I'm hoping we could do more of them under what law do we currently do that or what I'm thinking I'm looking at our city attorney may we need our write our own uh, 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 municipal code language regarding impounds of cars involved in street racing or just that are somehow are participating in it can you speak to that so the authority we use right now is uh, 23 I think it's 23103 it's a street racing uh, uh, reckless driving street racing section that mm -hmm. allows us to impound the vehicle okay I'll look at that language and you know I'll follow up with our city attorney and others on can we do more because I think if we have a city law that's new that's ours I think we will we'll get good publicity from the register or other outlets or social media that we have this new law that is stronger on impounding uh, uh, cars involved in or abetting in, 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 in street racing in Santa Ana and I think that'll be helpful okay. just the PR aspect of scaring people to other cities and then giving us stronger tools that are going to be a deterrence so we'll follow up on that thank you so much thank you additional questions or thoughts council members just say uh, just want to say excellent presentation thank you very much okay. I saw a lot of uh, uh, thinking outside the box on this this was very very good thank you gentlemen Thank you, Mayor. Yes, yeah. down. Go Mr. ahead, Councilmember Sarmiento. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so, I want to thank um, you know Public Works and um, and PD staff for coming up with some good recommendations on traffic calming measures and addressing this in a way that I think is fair. Um, I, I do want to respond to the comment about red light cameras. We, yeah, we did have red light cameras and in the city and we got flooded with complaints from people that saw those cameras and the sanctions that were applied to them very unfairly. Um, I even think there's some cases that, that uh, uh, consider them unconstitutional. So many cities actually disengaged because the only people that were making a lot of money were the red light camera vendors. So, uh, you know, we have to understand that we live in a community that, um, uh, you know, is very, uh, low income and some of these fines were five seven hundred dollars a piece so uh, I think there are other ways better ways that we can do uh, enforcement of speeding and these um, donuts I don't know there's a certain name they have for them but I know that there's plenty of these donuts occurring and speeding occurring on non-intersection streets um, they happen in residential areas they happen in areas when there's not red light where there aren't or wouldn't be any red light cameras and we put red light cameras and we're uh, sanctioning and being punitive on just regular civilians um, and uh, really not addressing the problem. So I certainly would be opposed to that, but if there's any other good ideas, I think that um, you know, Public Works and PD and others can continue to work with to address it. I think um, you know the roundabouts, I think there's other creative ways. I think um, what was mentioned, some bike lanes, uh, other traffic calming, um, uh, processes uh, uh, and adjustments that we can make to our uh, major arterials and even in some residential areas I think would go a long way to, to cure the problem. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Polito, this is Council Member Mendoza. Go ahead, Councilor Mendoza. Go ahead, please. Yes, I was wondering if uh, we've considered the rumble strips. Um, these were used in last May by the City of Los Angeles to deter street racing and it is my understanding that they are unnoticeable to the driver who is driving at a normal speed but the ones who are racing that it becomes um, visibly dis disruptive to their uh, handling of the car and it rumbles and uh, and maybe forces them to slow down has, has anyone considered um, the rumble strips and I don't think they're too expensive because uh, they're laid out um, at just a specific uh, length of um, uh, uh, in the, on the roadway, and I think they can be removed if it's not working in that area. So, um, does uh, if staff have any information on those uh, rumble strips? Yes, we've uh, we've uh, used and uh, we we would consider uh, using rumble strips. Uh, they're uh, similar to the installation of bot dots. Bot dots are a little bit larger and further apart. Rumble strips are together. 
Uh, and so, yes, we could, uh, we could consider the, the use of rumble strips. Uh, in residential areas, it might not be the best use because uh, then we would get complaints of noise at night. But certainly rumble strips in industrial areas uh, and maybe some of the other uh, uh, major corridors in the city, we could use those. All right, thank you for that. Thank you. Additional questions? Councilor Peñaloza, I, I would imagine you might have a question on this. No, sir? I do not, sir. Thank you. All right, no worries. Um, I, let me just make comment, then we'll move on to the next item. Uh, my comment is that um, I think we need, and we can think even a little bit more out of the box. In particular, I'm thinking about drones. Um, I think we could, you know, potentially have uh, drones, uh, you know, placed strategically uh, and potentially film some of this activity. Uh, you know, I know we have the police helicopter, uh, but that is one helicopter and it's expensive and it's noisy. And, you know, we get complaints from that. Uh, drones are coming. Um, you know, Amazon's going to use them to deliver packages. Um, it's, uh, you know, they're much quieter. Uh, I think if we could consider that, um, it would be helpful. Um, there's also going to be other vehicles that we don't yet see um, that um, are actually being developed here in Santa Ana. I don't know if the city manager could put a little presentation together and get it out to the council. I know a couple of us were invited to a little orientation, if you will. Um, and there's some vehicles that are airborne. Uh, they're like drones, but they're not really drones. They're for humans. Um, and they will, uh, they can fly. So they're like a plane, but they're also like a helicopter. They'll be able to land wherever you want to land because the uh, you know, the propellers rotate. Uh, this is a few years away when I'm talking about, but it's being built here in Santa Ana. We ought to track it. Our law enforcement ought to be well aware of it as well as traffic and everything else, because I think it's gonna change, uh, you know, the future and we can use it, you know, for enforcement uh, as well. Uh, I know Uber already has a contract with them because they're gonna actually be able to pick people up and take them places and it'll be extremely quick um it's not a helicopter so it doesn't have some of those inherent dangers because uh, it is able to actually glide uh and fly like a plane so so with that um let's go on to the next item please what's next madam uh, city clerk Yes, Mayor. Um, we do have a number of speakers. Um, and before I begin, I would like to report out the following summary of emails provided today through 4.42 p.m. On 11C, um, the second reading of who I had, five Santa Ana residents in opposition and two residencies not disclosed. For 20A, um, I had three Santa Ana residents in opposition. Um, one Santa Ana resident in support for 22A. Uh, 85A, we had six Santa Ana residents or property owners in support. Three Santa Ana residents in opposition. On August 18, 2020 council meeting, we did have also additional public comments. Um, we had one Santa Ana resident in opposition. For 85B, there were 41 Santa Ana residents in support, 13 non-Santa Ana residents. On August 18th, we received 19 Santa Ana residents in support and 21 residency not disclosed in support. In opposition, we had three Santa Ana property owners and one manufacturer home association. 85C, we had two Santa Ana residents in opposition, one Santa Ana resident um, just provided a comment. 85D, we had 22 Santa Ana residents or property owners in support, three residencies not disclosed, and then we had two Santa Ana residents in opposition, and then we had non-agenda items. One Santa Ana resident asked that 
Santa Ana Police Department and make sure to serve and protect during times of unrest. Santa Ana resident water bill basic service charge increased by 500%. One USCI Department of Population Health and Disease Prevention, a comment on environmental justice and community engagement in Santa Ana's general plan update. And one document provided by um, our city attorney. And that is all the comments that I have um, by email. And now the first caller we have, um, the numbers with the last three numbers, 574. Please dial star 6, and you may begin to speak. You have three minutes. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is Todd Spitzer, Orange County District Attorney. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in favor of item 85A, the resolution with respect to Proposition 20. I have the honor of serving as the Southern California co-chair with Patricia Witskunas, who is the founding member of Crime Survivors Incorporated. I would like to, I read all the letters that were submitted on file, and I want to make sure that some of the misperceptions about the initiative are clarified. Some of the letters indicated that this would make current misdemeanors felonies. That is not accurate. What it does is it does about four things, and I'll go through that quickly. <clears throat> it adds to the violent crime list crimes that were inadvertently left off that are not considered violent. For example, rape of an unconscious person, trafficking of a child for sex, assault on a police officer, felony domestic violence. The reason this is important, this doesn't put anybody in prison who would not normally go to prison if convicted on those charges. What it does is it ensures that they're not released early under Proposition 57. So it only changes the sentencing of an individual on the most serious and violent crimes that plague our community. Second, serial theft. Many of you know that the law changed after Prop 47. That made it no longer a felony if you stole over $400 from a retail establishment. That went up to $950. As a result, many of your businesses in Santa Ana have suffered greatly from additional theft because individuals know they can no longer be charged with a felony if they keep the dollar amount below $950. And $50. What this does is it says if you have been convicted a third time for stealing more than $250, the prosecutor may charge you with a felony. So it's not to punish the poor or the indigent. What it does is it's to attack individuals who are going into our retail establishments and ripping off our retail establishments and hurting our businesses. Third, parole violations. Today, after these uh, Prop 4757, if you're in front of the parole board and being considered for release, they can only look at the crime you last committed. It used to be they could look at your entire criminal history to determine whether or not you have been rehabilitated. Left. We simply want the entire criminal history to again be considered. Where I think people are confused we are asking forth on DNA collection that certain crimes that were reduced under Prop 47 as misdemeanors to allow for DNA collection. I think you hopefully up. agree with me that DNA de deters future criminality because people know we can catch them if we have their DNA. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I urge an I vote on item 85A. Thank you for calling in, Mr. District Attorney. You're always welcome and, and your input is appreciated. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, next speaker. The next caller we have um, is a Spanish speaker. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362. Por favor, marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada.
persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Next caller with the last three numbers, 012. Please dial star six and you may speak to proceed with your comment. It's the first one right under the spam speaker. Madam Clerk, that's a lot of speakers not responding. Could there be something wrong with the system? I believe that the um, speaker, the callers have to dial star six in order for them to be unmuted, and then they may proceed to speak. Caller with the last three numbers, 012, please dial star six to speak. Caller with the last three numbers, 012, you may proceed to speak. Hello. Hi, caller with the last three number 012. You may proceed to speak. You have three minutes. Okay, that caller muted themselves. Caller with the last three numbers, 757, please dial star six and proceed to speak. Callers with the last three numbers, 757, please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hi, my name is Kim, and I'm just calling um, for item number 75A. I'm the owner of 1122 North Bewley, and I just wanted to introduce myself in case there are any questions. Thank you. We'll go ahead and mute you until we uh, bring up the 75A item. Caller with the last three numbers, 100. Please dial star six to speak, and you may proceed with your comment. Good evening. This is Casey Heidler with Tom's Tech Center. Mayor and council members, thank you for modifying the housing ordinance. This change makes sense. Uh, with our project on 3rd and 4th Street, we've already started the process to begin construction of 117 homes in the downtown area. In addition, we will still pay over a million dollars in affordable housing fees to the city. So please continue to be proactive with changes like this. It makes a lot of sense for the city. Thank you very much. Caller with the last three numbers, 272. Please dial star six to speak, and you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 272. Please dial star six to speak, and you may proceed with your comment. Uh, 
caller with the last three numbers, 032, please dial star 6 to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Hi, my name is Nathaniel Greensides. I'm a Ward 5 resident. I'm calling in to request that the council supports item 85B. A lot of the opponents who are opposed to the item are opposed to it because they're afraid of the rent control initiative, which was stopped by COVID. And while we didn't need rent control in Santa Ana, and the vast majority of people in Santa Ana would agree, the item as it's written is actually about putting an initiative to the voters to let the voters of the city decide. Nick, it could be for any initiative that was caused by, by the pandemic. The rent control initiative was just one of, of a few. And so I ask that the city council support, forgive me, I'm a little winded, had to move because I can't afford the rent. Um, oh, sorry. I'm calling to ask that the council supports the item so that the voters of the city have a chance to decide initiatives of the city one of the coveted aspects of our democracy is that people can circulate a petition and gather signatures for what they believe should be a law of their own land. So the item is written so that the council can put onto the ballot an initiative for the voters. And I ask that the council allows for the will of the people to show through in the elections of the democratic process. And I hope that all the council members will uphold that right and protect it and allow the voters of the city to decide what should or should not be a law. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 394. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 394, please dial star six and proceed to speak. Caller with the last three numbers, 193, please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Yes, we can yes, hear you. On. You may proceed you to speak. Yes. Yes. You may speak. If you have YouTube. Yes, hi, my name is Erica. If you have YouTube. Yes, hi, my on, name is Erica. Go I'm sorry. If you have YouTube on, can I ask you to please lower the volume so we don't get any feedback? Yeah, I went ahead and closed it because I, <laughs> I could hear my the, the echo. Um, do my three minutes start over? Yes, I haven't I haven't started it yet. Okay, so my name uh, my name is Erica Gonzalez. I'm a uh, Ward One resident. I'm a business owner, small business owner. Um, I work for the after school program. I'm a parent. I was a student here. I grew up in Santana, and I do organizing here. And I'm calling in regards to 85B. Um, the extension of the collection of signatures. Tenants United Santana is a work center that dignified in housing as the most basic necessity for a person's well-being. And thus the efforts are dedicated towards the stabilization of rent. We understand the importance of addressing rent stabilization in our city, recognizing that the majority of residents are renters, 56% and rent burdened are 64%. Beginning on February 1st of 2020, we kicked off the rent stabilization ordinance campaign. The spread of COVID-19 spiraled into a global pandemic soon after we began that campaign. While we have all transitioned to online interfaces to accommodate our lives, the RSO campaign relies upon physical interactions for collecting signatures, none of which could be collected via internet or phone call. For the safety of our families and communities, DUSA halted outdoor canvassing on March 16th 
due to the nationwide call limiting social gatherings. In the period of 44 days before the shelter-in-place orders took effect, we trained 153 volunteers and started circulating 153 petitions containing 50, signature, 50 signature spaces each. We have confirmed that 1,703 signatures were gathered during this initial period. The county shelter-in-place order explicitly prohibited us from being able to go door-to-door, -door, but within our brief window of campaigning, we demonstrated massive public interest in our campaign. Similarly, in 2018, we garnered substantial public support of our campaign. We needed 90, uh, 9,854 signatures, and we ended up collecting 9,299. If given the full 180 days this time, we believe that we could have met the goal of gathering those 10,909 signatures that we needed. So due to the global pandemic, we lost 133 days of signature gathering out of the 180 days that we were granted. Since the nationwide call limiting gatherings of more than 10 people, March 16th, to our final date to turn in our signatures, which was July 27th, our ability to gather signatures has been impacted. June 11th, we began to drive up signature gathering events because the shelter in place orders started to relax but still could not go door to door. Residents who were sick could not attend and volunteers who were immunocompromised could not participate. On July 2nd, one of our drive up locations had to shut down because of a positive COVID-19 case. This method has proven to be risky and impractical as many of our volunteers are elderly. In San Benito County, the courts ruled in favor of petitioners who were circulating a petition against an order that the city aimed to pass. The court stated that the petitioners should have the opportunity and understood that the shelter in place orders prevented the constitutional requirements from being met. This order granted the petitioners an extension, which would begin 30 days after the shelter in place orders were lifted. We request that the city council consider extending the deadline to account for the 133 days we could not safely left. gather signatures during the shelter in place orders. Alternatively, we ask that the city council place the ordinance on the ballot, putting the question to voters and honoring the fact that we have demonstrated public interest. It is clear that this pandemic has impeded our capacity to engage in the democratic process. Directly placing the ordinance on the ballot would most effectively address the impending eviction and housing instability crisis. This has, without a question, worsened as a result of inconsistent enforcement of existing renters' protections. As members elected by the constituents Thank of you, Santana, we hope that up. you will address our concerns, and we look forward to taking the next steps with you in making every voice heard. Thank you for, uh, thank you for your time. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 034, please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed with your comment. Hi, my name is Kaylee and I'm calling from Ward 5 and I'm reaching out to ask that you support an extension for the petition circulators due to the shelter in place orders, collecting signatures from people in person was not considered essential. And so legally, we were not able to collect signatures. Um, I'm a volunteer with Tenants United Santana as well. And so 133 of the 180 days that we were legally entitled to in the democratic process, we could not uh, gather signatures. Also, there's precedent set in other counties where petitioners have been granted an extension. So for this item, I ask that you vote in favor of giving the staff direction to present all the documents necessary to grant extensions to petitioners. Additionally, please consider using your power as city council members to place the Tenants United Santana Rent Stabilization Ordinance on the ballot, not for this upcoming November ballot, but the following one, which would be special elections or the next primaries. So I believe that the goal of signature gathering is to demonstrate public interest, which we definitely have both in 2018 and again in 2020. And so I believe that this would be one of the best ways to address the concerns that the majority renter city of Santana has. People need real protections around rent increases. They're still receiving rent increases even during a pandemic and they need real protections around evictions as soon as possible. So city council has the power to place the ordinance on the ballot themselves and give voters the opportunity to decide. Thank you. Thank you. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números. 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números. 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada.
2016. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 362, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. ¿Aló? Aló, sí, ahora le podemos oír. Ah, oh, sí, aló, buenas noches, mi nombre, uh, bueno, buenas noches a los concejales y, y alcaldes, uh, mi nombre es Alejandra. Luciano y estoy aquí este para uh, una propuesta para este para que aprueben la la 85B uh, eso o, o, es una necesidad para nosotros eh, que los latinos necesitamos el control de renta con todo esto de la pandemia la verdad es una necesidad que se, uh, si nos gustaría que aprobaran por favor uh, así como ustedes necesitan su su voto cuando es la elección es para ustedes, si quiere uno que vote, así nosotros ahorita lo necesitamos y pues la verdad ahorita más que nada la pandemia nos puso muy abajo y la verdad sí lo necesitamos más que nada. Muchas gracias. My name is Alejandra Luciano and I'm here to uh, ask you to approve the proposal on 85B. We need this. Uh, the Latino population uh, needs rent control because of the pandemic. Uh, please approve this. Uh, uh, approve this. Uh, you need us uh, when when we're, you need us to vote for you. So we are here, and now we need your vote. So the pandemic is uh, is making this very hard. So we need this a lot. Caller with the last three numbers, 167, please dial star six to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Hi, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, we could hear you. You may proceed with your comment. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is David Carvajal. I'm a community health worker and lifetime resident here in the city of Santana. I live in Ward 2. Um, I'm calling in regarding um, agenda item 85B. Um, in 2017, we asked city council to pass rent control and they didn't. So we took it to voters to decide in 2018 by pushing together enough signatures to put rent control on the ballot. We displayed massive public interest. We needed 9,854 signatures and we ended up collecting 9,299. In 2020, we launched our ballot initiative again, but it wasn't safe or legal to collect signatures under the shelter in place orders by Governor Newsom. We're asking city council today to put our rent control ordinance on the ballot, honoring the fact that we have demonstrated public interest both in 2018 and now. There was a housing crisis before the pandemic and it has only gotten worse. People are still receiving rent increases and we need real rent control and protections are on evictions now more than ever. In other counties, like in Central California and San Benito County, petitioners have been granted an extension because the court saw that they were not able to gather signatures during the time they were legally entitled to in the democratic process. So today we're pursuing that process, but that can take time. And so we're asking city council once again to use your power to let voters decide the future of rent control in the city of Santa Ana. We need it. We need protections for our community. Uh, we work day in and day out with tenants that are um, that are letting us know that they are being evicted, um, that are letting us know that um, they can no longer afford living where they're living. It's causing lots of displacement. Um, and all of you know that on city council. So we're asking you to please act uh, accordingly and, and protect tenants in Santana. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 136. 
Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed with your comment. Great. Hello, everybody. My name is Alondra Salazar. I'm a Santa Ana resident, and I'm calling in support of 85, item 85C and to urge city council members to put rent control on the ballot themselves to let voters decide the future of rent control in our community. Volunteers have been exerting themselves since 2018 to collect rent control signatures. It is time y'all step up as a city council and show you care about your community's housing and overall well-being by putting this up for a vote. I say well-being because people should not have to live in fear and anxiety of their rent being raised and being evicted, especially not during a pandemic. People should not have to decide between putting food on their table and paying rent. This is far from uncommon given that over 30% of renters in Santa Ana spend more than half of their income on rent. You have the power of putting rent control on the ballot. The matter is you, you care enough of the community you represent to do so. We are urging you to let voters decide. Having rent control is a matter of helping your community get and keep their housing. It is a matter of caring for your community's physical and mental, mental health. Your community needs real rent and eviction protection. People have displayed massive public interest. People have called, people have advocated. Now it is time for you to show your support. Santa Ana needs real and permanent rent control. This is long overdue. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 388. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Uh, this is Mike Cardiff. I'm a Santa Ana resident, business and property owner, um, calling on item 85D. I'm opposed to a drug needle exchange program in Santa Ana. When that program was operating here, I would find used drug needles all over my industrial property near Fort Grand. Drug needles would also be found in Santa Ana parks and many places throughout the city. Such a program would attract drug users to Santa Ana as it did in the past. Uh, I do not support a drug needle exchange program in Santa Ana. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 335, please dial star six to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Caller, you've been unmuted. You may proceed to speak with your comment. Caller, with the last three numbers, 335, you may proceed with your comment. Caller, with the last three numbers, 335. Okay. Caller, with the last three numbers, 268, please dial star 6, and you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 335, you may proceed with your comment. What's the next number? Caller with the last three numbers, 469. Please dial star six, and you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 469. Please dial star six to speak, then you may proceed with your comment. Hola, buenas tardes, ¿me escuchan? Sí. 
Ok, uh, buenas tardes a concejales y alcaldes. Mi nombre es Jorge Casillas y yo soy residente de Santa Ana. Mi comentario es referente al punto 85B. Yo estuve recauda recaudando firmas para poner un control de renta en la boleta de elecciones con Latino Hell Access y la coalición de Tusa. Desafortunadamente no pudimos recaudar las firmas que necesitamos, pero estoy seguro de que hubiéramos logrado si no hubiera sido por la pandemia. Esta es la segunda vez que tenemos que recaudar firmas y la verdad no quisiéramos ir por una tercera vez porque pues los residentes de Santa Ana se preguntan, bueno, pero otra vez colectar firmas y pues ya entran en la desconfianza, ¿verdad? Y eso es comprensible. Ya que el concilio ha decidido no aprobar un contrato de rentas para la ciudad, todos los que hemos participado en esta campaña lo hacemos porque estamos viviendo la necesidad antes y ahora más durante la pandemia. En lo personal... Pues yo anteriormente tenía mi trabajo, ah, pues cómodamente podía realizar todos mis gastos, todos mis pagos, pero desafortunadamente con eso de la pandemia, desde marzo que perdí mi trabajo, pues no he tenido ingresos y pues he tratado de obtener ingresos por medio de, del desempleo, pero pues yo entiendo que hay muchísima gente que está tratando de aplicar para el desempleo y pues uh, creo yo que no se dan abasto y pues yo he tratado de llamar y llamar y llamar y pues me han contestado pero me dan vueltas y pues mi ingreso sigue bajando, ¿verdad? O sea, ¿qué puedo hacer? La gente sigue recibi recibiendo aumentos de rentas, necesitamos un control de rentas ahora más que nunca. Les pido de la manera más atenta que pues uh, ustedes se honren todo el trabajo y tiempo para para lo que hemos dedicado, ¿verdad? En nuestros últimos tres años y que dejen que los votantes de Santa Ana decidan, por favor, pongan nuestro propuesta de control de renta en la boleta de una elección especial. De antemano se los agradezco y que tengan una muy buena tarde todos ustedes. Gracias. Good evening, council members, mayor. My name is Jorge Casillas and I'm a Santa Ana resident and I'm here to support 85B. I've, I've been gathering signatures, uh, a lot of signatures with Latino Health Access and, and uh, TUSA. And uh, we were not, unfortunately, we were not able to gather all the uh, signatures that, that were required because of the time. This is the second time we've been doing this, gathering signatures. We would not want to go to a third time because the Santa Ana residents are going to wonder why uh, are we doing this again. They're not going to trust us and it's understandable. Uh, so we want, we would like the council, uh, the, the, the council did not approve rent control measures before, and uh, we are living this need. Uh, we were in this need before the pandemic happened, uh, and now it's even worse. I used to work uh, my job, and I used to be able to make my payments, but because of the pandemic, since March, I lost my job, and I don't have uh, money, and I tried to... Uh, to apply for unemployment, but I guess lots of people apply. There's not enough to go around, and I keep calling and calling and, and nothing. So uh, I'm getting less and less uh, m money. We need this. The people uh, in Santa Ana are getting rent uh, increase now. So now more than ever, we need rent control in Santa Ana. Uh, so I ask you that uh, we've been doing this for the last uh, three years. Let Santa Ana voters decide put the rent control measure on a special election. Uh, thank you very much. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 335, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, la podemos escuchar. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Saray Arpero, soy residente de Santana, trabajo en la ciudad de Santana 
y he crecido a mis cuatro hijos en esta ciudad. Eh, estoy en referencia al punto 85B. Eh, hemos estado colectando todas estas firmas durante este tiempo de pandemia. Eh, también creo que es importante honrar el trabajo que se ha venido eh, colectando desde el 2017. En el 2018 salimos a colectar firmas, lo cual estuvimos a casi nada de poder llegar a la meta. Estamos en una situación bien complicada en este momento, porque aunque podamos salir a colectar las firmas, no es razonable cuando se nos está pidiendo que nos quedemos en casa, cuando se nos está pidiendo que cuidemos de nuestras familias, cuando en la misma ciudad está sacando un fondo de asistencia para la renta para que la gente se quede en casa. Considero que ya hemos tenido ejemplos democráticos donde los votantes deciden a quién quieren ver como nuestros representantes o a quién no quieren ver. La señora Nélida, la concejal Nélida, es un ejemplo eh, de esto. Permitamos y practiquemos que los votantes sean quienes decidan si quieren ver un control de renta o no en Santana. Escuchemos a las personas como yo y como muchos de los que están hablando que viven, trabajan y pagan más de la mitad de sus salarios en pura renta. Santana tiene el derecho de elevar su voz otra vez a través del voto. Por favor, les estamos pidiendo que consideren poner el referendo en las próximas elecciones. Es cuestión de... Es es una responsabilidad moral cuando nos están pidiendo que nos cuidemos, cuando nos están pidiendo, eh, pidiendo que nos contengamos, incluso para que nuestros hijos regresen a las escuelas. Entonces, por favor, honren el trabajo de las personas voluntarias que han estado tocando puerta a puerta, honren el trabajo de las personas que en este tiempo de pandemia estuvieron llamando y estuvieron aún así colectando firmas, poniendo en riesgo su salud. Eh, creo que como residente de Santana, me gustaría que se practique la democracia cuando ustedes todo el tiempo hablan de democracia y hablan de justicia para todos. Gracias. My name is Aida Ferro and I, uh, I'm a resident of Santa Ana and I work in Santa Ana. I'm here to uh, support 85B. We've been collecting uh, signatures through, uh, up to through the pandemic and uh, it's very important uh, we've been doing this, this work. To, it's important to recognize the work that has been done in 2017. In 2018, we collected lots of signatures. We almost made it. We were very close. And uh, it's a very complicated situation because we can go and collect, but you are asking, asking us to take care of ourselves and to stay at home. So please help with, uh, uh, even when Santa Ana is helping people with the rent so that they can stay at home. So that's not, not congruent. The voters, uh, let the voters decide. Uh, we voters decide who our representatives are, as is, is in the case of uh, Ms. Nelida Mendoza. Uh, she's an example of that. So let the voters decide on rent control. Uh, listen to the, to the people. We uh, are paying more than half our uh, income on rent. Uh, let the Santa Ana express their voice through vote, through their vote. So please uh, consider putting this referendum in the next uh, election. It's uh, your moral responsibility when you're asking us to stay at home and uh, let's honor the volunteer work of people who are knocking on doors, gathering signatures. Uh, we are out there uh, risking our health to do this. Let's make democracy work in Santa Ana for all. Caller with the last three numbers, 268. Please dial star six, then proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 268. Please dial star six. My name is Joselinda, and I'm a resident in Ward 2. I'm calling in support of 85B. I know this item is for an extension for a petition circulating in Santana, but I'm urg urging you all to put rent control on the ballot as it is something you all have the power to do. Santana residents have already demonstrated their interest for rent control here in Santana, signing the petition to put rent control on the ballot in large numbers um, in both to the 2018 and this year's campaign. Like other folks I mentioned today, a lot of people here in our community are extremely burdened with rent 
experienced predatory rent increases, and this pandemic has only exacerbated these hardships. No one should have to choose between food and rent. Um, rent control will provide ec immediate economic relief and eviction protection. I'm asking you all to put rent control ordinance on the ballot, honoring the massive public interest, ensuring the safety for folks circulating the petitions, and to keep people housed. Y'all are always asking or like wondering what the community wants, especially when elections are approaching. And we have been and are letting you all know now, we want the opportunity to vote on rent control. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 008. Please dial star six to speak. And you may Hi, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, you may proceed. Yes, Mayor, City Council members, thank you. Steve Lamont, Building Industry Association, Orange County. I just wanted to briefly call in and comment on a consent calendar item 11C, uh, the Housing Opportunity Ordinance. Uh, we would like to share our appreciation for the direction um, that the council took at the last meeting. Uh, I won't go into significant detail as you, you've heard what I've had to say multiple times, uh, but I do truly feel that this current direction will benefit the most within the city. Uh, this will produce affordable housing money for the fund, as you just heard from a previous caller. Uh, this will provide a vast amount of jobs, uh, both union and non-union, and it will provide a market rate and attainable housing uh, for locals and for those who are uh, not on the affordable housing or on a affordable housing list. Uh, so we definitely see it covering uh, the, the, the most amount of people and doing the most good. Um, so thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 988. Please dial star six to speak and you may proceed with your comment. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Polito and city council members. Uh, my name is Tim O'Brien, I'm with Legacy Partners. I'd just like to thank you for your continued support of the WHO Amendment. Um, in the case of Sunflower, which I've called you about, um, uh, you know, it, it means the immediate uh, start of a project which will result in you know jobs, including union jobs, um, as well as uh, contribute um, funds into the into the WHO fund, um, about nine hundred thousand dollars worth. And so, I wanted to um, just call and, and tell you how important that was to to us and to the um, the community at large. Um, thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 302, please dial star six to speak and you may proceed with your comment. All right, Juan Gonzalez, Ward One resident. Council members, who represents the Santana community to you? Is the image in your head a for-profit real estate group or housing developer that neither lives nor works in the city? Or is the image in your head the true heart of Santana? resilient working class folks that have built, helped to build this city from the ground up and that have seen generations of family grow up here. By voting against item 11C, you will prove to your fellow Santaneros that you stand with us and not with corporate housing firms. Council members Becerra and Villegas have asked us to stop expecting Santana to shoulder the responsibility of building affordable housing in the county. We should all be offended by that because the implication is that Santaneros will quietly and willingly pack up their lives here to go chasing affordable housing elsewhere in the county. Our generational roots here are non-negotiable. We expect this council to make substantial investments in affordable housing within this city because this is our home. This is where we want to stay. Corporate housing will already gladly give us the boot by pricing us out. Don't allow them the power to do so. I'd like to now address council members Vaterra and Peñalosa directly, as well as anyone who may support them on item 85D. One critical question is this. Have you sought the guidance and support of public health, medical and homelessness professionals for this proposal? Or is this yet another reactionary plan that has no base in scientific evidence? Syringe exchange programs are critical examples of the harm reduction model of public health, which aims to lessen the negative impacts of the human disease that is drug addiction. Public health research has consistently shown that syringe exchange programs have been successful in reducing the spread of HIV and hepatitis C among drug users. 
These programs are also oftentimes the first point of contact for formal drug treatment, access to health services, and counseling and mental health referrals. Cities without syringe exchange programs oftentimes spend much more on their health infrastructure because they must deal with preventable diseases. To give a more concrete example of the dangers of prohibiting syringe exchange, let me tell you about the town of Austin, Indiana. In 2013, local public health professionals sensed a potential outbreak of HIV among drug users on the horizon. However, at the time, the state of Indiana prohibited syringe exchange programs and continuously ignored public health recommendations for their increased need. It was only three years later that a temporary needle exchange program was implemented in Austin, when 215 cases of HIV infection had already been attributed to the outbreak. This was just in one small town. The governor of Indiana that stood firm against syringe exchange throughout these years was now Vice President Mike Pence. Experts believe that up to 127 HIV infections could have been avoided if Pence had proactively implemented syringe exchange programs. Stand with science and health and shut down 85D and any other proposals that will punish addicts for being addicts, the unhoused for being unhoused, and the poor for being poor. Thank you. Good, have a good night. Thank you. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 174, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con las, los tres últimos números. Ok, usted puede hablar. Sí, gracias. Eh, buenas noches, eh, queridos miembros del concilio. Mi nombre es Adela Montañez. Y la razón de mi llamada es recordarles que en esta ciudad, y ustedes lo saben mejor que yo, hay 330 mil habitantes, de los cuales la mitad de ellos son personas que rentan. Y en esta circunstancia tan adversa que tenemos a nivel mundial, ¿verdad? Eh, especialmente aquí en Santa Ana, con tristeza vemos nosotros que estamos al frente de la comunidad, personas que son desalojadas, personas que no tienen trabajo. Niños que tienen que estudiar bajo un puente porque no tienen un techo sobre de ellos. Vemos personas que no tienen para comer, pero especialmente vemos personas que tienen fe y esperanza en que sus líderes que están al frente y que fueron elegidos por ellos vean no por la minoría, sino por la mayoría de esta ciudad. Ahorita vemos que el 51% de personas que rentan en Santa Ana necesitan un control de renta y necesitan el apoyo de ustedes como su concilio para que puedan poner en la boleta ya sea de noviembre o una eh, votación especial para que esto pueda suceder. No estamos pidiendo que ustedes aprueben el control de renta, estamos pidiendo que ustedes le den la oportunidad a ese 51% de personas para que los votantes de la ciudad de Santana vean si esto es, quieren tener en la ciudad. Yo sé que eh, es muy triste oír uh, los comentarios de, de mis antecesores que están apoyando este punto, el 85B, y saber que muchos de nuestros niños, yo hablo todos los días con personas eh, vía telefónica con necesidades muy grandes, eh, además de la pandemia, el estrés de saber que no van a tener un techo, que no van a tener donde sus niños puedan estudiar. Entonces, eh, consideramos que quien tiene eh, el poder del cambio son ustedes. Y por eso eh, pedimos, ¿verdad? Y qué bueno que en la oración al, al inicio pidieron por su sabiduría, por su paciencia y también que vean por la gran mayoría de la ciudad y no por la minoría que, que, que apoyan a la minoría, sino a la gran mayoría. Así que les pedimos nuevamente que por favor pongan en la boleta un control de renta, no que ustedes lo pongan, sino que los ciudadanos um, de Santana lo decidan. Muchas gracias. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Adela Montañez, and I'm here to remind you, I don't have to remind you, you know that there's over 330,000 people living in Santa Ana, and over half of them are uh, renters. Uh, due to the current situation that we live all over the world, and especially in Santa Ana, it's sadly to say that a lot of people are getting evicted. 
There's ki there are kids that have to study on their, on their bridges. They don't have food. And especially, there's lots of people that uh, have faith in their leaders to see uh, that the wishes, not of the, minor the, ma the minority, but of the majority, are looked after. Over 51% of the renters in Santa Ana need rent control. So we're asking you to put this ballot, uh, this uh, issue in the November ballot or in a special election. We're not asking you to approve this, uh, that the city council approves rent control, but to give the opportunity to the 51% of the people, to Santa Ana voters, to decide. And it's sad to hear the comments from the people that went before me supporting 85B. The pandemic has given us a lot of stress and people are, are stressed with this and they're worrying about a roof over their heads. They have no place for their kids to study. And you have the power to make a change. Um, and I love the invocation earlier in the, in the meeting where we asked, uh, he asked about uh, wisdom for you, patience, and for you to look after the majority in the city. So we're, we're asking you to put this rent control on the ballot and let the Santa Ana uh, voters decide. Caller with the last three numbers, 019, please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Vanessa. I'm a Ward 3 resident, and I'm calling to comment and vocalize my support of item 85B. A landslide of residential interest has been shown for rent control in our city. We all know that, all re that the already existing housing crisis has been severely worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. While residents are being issued unbelievable rent increases and to mitigate the lasting ripple effects of this pandemic, we will need robust protections against unjust evictions moving forward. So I implore that the city council members place the rent control ordinance on the ballot to honor their constituents' needs. Santa Ana residents deserve permanent rent control. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 868. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, city council members and mayor. My name is Hilda Ortiz, speaking on behalf of Latino Health Access on items 85B and 11C. I'll start with 85B. Um, we at LHA worked in coalition with Tenants United Santa Ana and resident groups prior to the pandemic to collect signatures to place rent control on our city's ballot. Our signature collection initiative dates back to 2018 for our first attempt at bringing the decision to voters. Back then, we were short 500 signatures out of the close to 10,000 that we needed. We at, LHA, we at LHA believe that the people living the inequities are the ones that know best what the solutions are. And so our work toward health and equity is guided by the community, which is why we decided to continue this work when our resident base decided that we needed to try again to place the initiative on the ballot this year. Over 150 residents have dedicated a significant amount of time to these efforts, not only in this collection of signatures itself, but dedicating all of 2019 and participating in weekly meetings, workshops, trainings, participating in statewide conferences, researching other communities, learning to read precincts, learning about the ballot measure process in general, all while also living in the city's densest areas, overpaying rent for rent every month, like the majority of renters in our city, and working full-time low-paying jobs, taking care of children and household duties. The commitment of these residents come from the experiences they live every day and from being constantly at the risk of being forced out of the city due to the high rent costs. They are fighting to stay in the city of Santa Ana. We're asking you today to honor the civic participation of these residents in our community. An extension to collect signatures would require residents to leave their homes and place their health and that of our community at risk. You're aware of the work that LHA has been doing in partnership with the county and the city to stop the spread of the virus facilitating testing, connecting residents to services, and clarifying misinformation through our COVID call center. The city has also been dedicating a significant amount of resources and efforts to slow the spread of the virus in our city. We've only just begun to slowly decrease COVID-19 cases and forcing residents to go out to collect signatures would put them at risk again. 
Please protect your constituents from risking their lives, honor their participation, and acknowledge the massive public interest of our majority tenant community for this initiative by placing the rent control proposal on the ballot for a special election. Let Santana voters decide the future of rent control in our city. Um, in regards to item 11C, amendments to the housing opportunity ordinance, I won't repeat what you've heard. You've heard the massive opposition to this item from the community. I hope you, you will take the second left. reading as an opportunity to think of the people you are representing and oppose the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 683. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria, and I'm here in today of support in support of item 85B. Um, growing up in Santana, I have firsthand experience and witnessed how out of reach rent increases and unjust evictions um, affect families like mine. Now, as a volunteer tenant counselor, many Santana and the renters have confided in me the unjust situations they have faced, like uninhabitable homes illegal evictions, hostile and aggressive landlords, and ridiculous rent increases when the rent was already too high. Tenants United Santana has been a coalition fighting for real rent control in Santa Ana since 2018. Since then, there has been growing momentum and support for rent control from Santa Ana residents. In 2018, we were able to collect over 9,000 signatures. In our most recent campaign, we were able to collect more than 2,000 signatures in less than two months, despite being halted by California stay-at-home orders due to COVID-19. It is clear that the majority of, of public interest is in favor of rent control. It is clear that stable and, and accessible housing is what our city needs. Over half of Santa Ana's populations are renters, many who are rent burdened, using 30% or more of their income on rent alone, many having to choose between essential necessities like food or rent. What, um, COVID-19 has exacerbated these housing insecurities in our city. Many renters facing illegal evictions and rent, incre rent increases as we continue to face our current public health and socio socioeconomic crises. And we all know that the effects of COVID-19 will be long-term. And due to that, we need rent control and more tenant protections in our city. I would like to recognize that AB 1482 is not rent control and it is not enough. It is, it is a temporary anti-rent rent gouging act that expires in 10 years. It is not rent control and does not protect tenants. A rent control initiative will allow the real Senate and the community to remain and thrive in the, in the city that we call, we call home. We are legally entitled to the 130, 133 days we lost of our, our, of our campaign due to the pandemic. We know an extension is possible because of the precedent set by other California jurisdictions like Sacramento and San Benito County. I'm here to also shine light on the fact that you guys have the power to put the rent control initiative on an, on an election ballot in an, un, in an upcoming election. With respect to the democratic process that put all of you in your seats to represent the Santa Ana community, we ask that you do not risk the health of, of Tennessee United Santa Ana volunteers like myself and Santa Ana residents knowing that you have the power to put the initiative on an election ballot for the next election. 15 seconds. Our left. initiative is meant to be for the people, by the people. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 656. Please dial star six to speak and proceed with your comment. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you. Uh, good evening, six, um, council members, mayor, and everyone watching and listening at home. My name is Jesus Santana, a proud Santanero who resides in Ward 4. I'm calling today to speak on agenda item 85B. I strongly support and encourage you all to support the extension of all circulating petitions that were affected by the shelter in place orders due to the infamous coronavirus pandemic. As you all know, many of our community members and their families have been severely impacted. According to the OC Healthcare Agency's website, the total number as of today is 9,431. That's 19% of the total number of cases in the county. The communities being most affected are low-income, undocumented, and homeless communities. Now more than ever, your constituents and community members need your help. 
I appreciate that the city launched the CARES initiative two weeks ago, but unfortunately, that is not enough. There's still a huge amount of people who are, not, who are rent burdened and do not qualify for the rental assistance. We need to continue to protect and support our families, children, friends, and neighbors. Currently, as I speak, there are people and families in danger of being displaced and evicted. You all obtain the power to extend the time to collect signatures for the rent control petition, or you can simply vote in favor of placing it on this year's November ballot so that volunteers and tenants don't have to risk their lives. Thank you, and I hope you all and everyone at home are taking care. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 239, please dial star six to speak, then proceed with your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, good evening. My name is Meshley Lopez. I am a constituent of Ward 5, and I've been a, long, a lifetime resident of Santana. Um, today, I am addressing you in reference to item 85B. And what I'd like to say about this is that Santana was in a housing crisis before the pandemic, and many renters entered the pandemic already facing housing instability and were vulnerable already to eviction. An estimated 20.8 million renter households, that's 47.5% of all U.S. renters, are cost burdened by their rent. Rent um, burden affects those who spend over 30% of their monthly income on rent, if you're not aware of what the term rent burden means. No wonder uh, people had nothing to fall back on when the pandemic started and people didn't even have money to eat, let alone pay the rent. 56% uh, of the residents of Santana are renters. And these numbers, we get them from the census, census which we constantly talk about, is probably underreported. So I would argue that the number is actually much larger and that people who are renters are probably less likely to fill out the census because they're probably also um, living in overcrowded conditions. They probably uh, are undocumented, so they're not reporting on themselves properly. 64% of those residents are also rent burdened and 21.1 percent of residents in Santana live in poverty under the federal poverty line and that's the highest percentage in all of Orange County so today I uh, I urge you to vote based on the demographics of the city that you represent which means taking all of this into account we have seen COVID-19 ravage our city and our community at a disproportionate rate. We have one of the highest um, cases, case numbers of COVID because of this, not just in the state, not just in the county, but also in the state. These things don't happen in a vacuum, but they are a direct result of structural inequities and many, many years of neglect neglect from city officials, from, from governments, from the lack of, of policy implementation. And so I ask you that you act now to prevent these impacts from being greater in the future. Um, in the absence of your willingness to pass the rent control law yourself, we ask that at minimum, you grant us the 130 days that we lost due to the pandemic. And as many people mentioned before, you also have the, the ability and the moral imperative to Thank put this on the ballot yourself to protect ballot circulators. Thank you for your call. Your time is up. The rental city that we live in. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 054. Please dial star six to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment.
Caller with the last three numbers, 054, please dial star 6 to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 054, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 054. Por favor, marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Caller with the last three numbers, 451. Please dial star 6 to speak, then proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 451. Caller with the last three numbers, 451. Please dial star 6 to speak, then proceed with your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, this is Isuri. I am a Santana resident. Today I've called to remind you of the strong opposition to the proposed amendments to the Housing Opportunity Ordinance. This is item 11C. Last City Council meeting, you received nearly 150 letters of opposition from both organizations and Santana residents, and today you received more. At the second meeting, you are being given the opportunity to change course. You are being given the opportunity to right your wrongs, to vote against the ill-advised recommendations to lower the annual fee to $5. This is a number that seems to have appeared out of thin air because no staff report has explained the logic to this number. All we have heard is market rate developers ask for this amount and a few council members say that it's the right number. And today you're hearing developers calling in to thank you. You're also hearing residents practically begging you to put rent control on the ballot. So I ask that you please think Think very carefully about what you're doing. Think about what you'll be doing if you move forward with the proposed amendments to the Housing Opportunity Ordinance and if you fail to put rent control on the ballot. Today you have the, you're, you have the chance to send a message on who you're standing with. Are you standing with market rate developers that are coming into, a communi into our community to merely make a profit? Or are you going to stand by Santana residents that are in desperate need of you to do your job? And I also want to remind you all, specifically uh, Council Member uh, Peñalosa, I believe Council Member Solorio and the Mayor, a few meetings back and you all were considering what measures to put on the ballot. You all spoke so highly of the need for community engagement. You spoke, you spoke so highly of the need to hear directly from community members and complain that there were only a handful that had participated, that had participated in the survey. So today you've heard from already Many, many residents, you've heard from residents since the pandemic has started and before that, since 2017, asking you to take action to alleviate our housing crisis. So now you have that. You have, you know exactly what you need to do when you ask you to do it. And be reminded that everybody is watching, especially those of you that will be running for re-election or that are uh, pursuing a higher office. So I ask you to do what is right. I ask you to not vote on 11C as it is. You don't have to approve this to and you know it, and to also put rent control on the ballot. Let the voters decide. 15 seconds and Support left. putting rent control on the ballot, just as you were supporting the residents that were opposing 2525 North Main. Show that you stand with all residents and not just those that live north of 17th Street. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 054, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números, 054, por favor marque 
Estrella 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona en el teléfono con los tres últimos números. 054, por favor marque asterisco 6 para reactivar su llamada. Persona con los tres últimos números, 054, marque estrella 6 para hablar. Persona con los tres últimos números, 054, Marque estrella 6 para hablar. Los tres últimos números 054, por favor marque estrella 6 para reactivar su número, su llamada. Caller with the last three numbers, 010, please dial star 6 to speak, then you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers 010, please dial star 6 to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers 489, please dial star 6 to speak. Then proceed with your comment. Hello, this is uh, Carl Benninger, and I'm on the uh, Connect the Council and, and uh, Comlink, as well as ETEC committee. What I'd like to do is let everyone know that on September 10th, there's going to be a candidates forum online. Uh, details you can get on the Connect the Council website, and it'll be both on Facebook and YouTube. And because we have so many candidates running for for the ward and for mayor. We're going to have a second candidate forum on September 17th for all the mayor candidates. What a, what a wonderful way to end up learning something about the candidates that are running for office in Santa Ana. And I encourage everybody to get out to vote. Second of all, I want to speak in, in favor of a prohibition on 85D for needles. Uh, those of us who lived through what it was like beforehand uh, know about needles all over the place, exposed to children, children were exposed to them, and uh, what have you. And we don't resolve the situation by encouraging the drug users to keep using drugs on it. You know, I feel very strong for Catholic charities. I am Catholic. I give money to them in the spring, and I go along with them. Jesus told us, told us to be uh, kind to each other, to be tolerant of each other, to learn uh, from each other, and to forgive each other. But he didn't tell us to be stupid. 
And if we were uh, to allow needles again in the city, as we have before, that's all we would be stu stupid because we'd be exposing good honest citizens to the possibility of getting stuck as well as all that trash that is around there. I truly believe that people who are addicted need help to get off, not to be encouraged to continue with. Thank you. Thank you, caller. With the last three numbers, 489. My apologies, 456. Please dial star six to speak and you may proceed with your comment. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, we're able to hear you. All right, perfect. So I would like to speak on item 11C uh, to the city council to vote against um, that. Um, I don't think that we should be giving the go to these corporations to you know, gentrify the city even more so than it has been. On item 20D, I am against um, against that item as well. Vote no on that. On 85A um, as well, it's a no for me. Um, I think we should be putting that money towards actual rehabilitation instead of instead of um, and so instead of um, putting authorizing the felony sentences for certain offenses and all of that, I really don't think it's it's the best practice for us. And then in terms of 85B, um, I think we do need rent control, honestly. And the fact that these people have to ask for an extension due to COVID, I think um, it, it makes sense. It really does. Uh, and I think the city council knows more than ever that we have a lot of Latino residents and as well, they are specifically renters. And um, a lot of them are barely able to pay this rent. And the fact of the matter is, if we don't put rent control, you're going to lose a lot of these constituents that that will not only use to, will be voting for you, but as well um, will not be continued, um, will we'll be moving to other places. And it's already happening. A lot of Latino residents are moving out of here. And I don't think that's accept acceptable, especially since Santa Ana is such a thriving city with the Latino culture. And as well, um, if we were to put rent control, the parents of the city will be able to put their money towards educational purposes for the kids. You know, I I've been hearing a lot that uh, a lot of students, especially in the SAUSD district, or in the school district have been having trouble uh, uh, gaining access to internet. And you know, if parents didn't have to worry as much about paying so much rent, um, they'd actually be able to afford Wi-Fi for, for our students. So I just want to say stop the gentrification. Uh, I think the city council has the power to do this and as well put a ballot on there for the people to to choose in November at a later time, I really do think we need rent control. And I just want a reminder for all of you uh, city council members, whether you're paying attention or not, uh, we are watching you. And 15 seconds. Come this November election, if for all these things that you guys are voting for or against, we are writing them down, we are paying attention. So know what to do that's right. And don't, don't go against your constituents. These are the people that you're representing. You work for the people and not for corporations or a small number of people, okay? Thank you so much. Uh, have a great night. Thank you. Okay, Rosa, ya yeah. puedes, sí, puede hablar. Okay. Buenas tardes, concejales y alcaldes. Mi nombre es Rosa Ramírez. Soy residente de Santa Ana. Mi comentario es referente al punto 85B yo estuve recaudando firmas para poner un control de renta en la boleta de elecciones con latinos y la coaliación de TUSA. Desafortunadamente no pudimos recaudar las firmas y necesitamos ajá, que por, pero estoy seguro de lo de que hubiéramos logrado si no hubiera sido por, por esta pandemia. Esta es la segunda vez que tenemos que recaudar firmas, ya que el concilio decidió no aprobar un control de rentas para la ciudad. Y a mí me gustaría que por favor hubiera un control de renta, 
porque la verdad, la cantidad que hemos, estamos pagando por uh, cada seis meses nos están aumentando la renta y no es justo que vivamos tres, cuatro personas en un apartamento de dos recámaras, de una recámara y vivamos todos amontonados. Parecemos peor que al verde. Le digo, por eso no es justo. Para mí, se me, a mí se me hace justo que hubiera un control de renta y que aprobaran, por favor, por la 85B. Porque también hay personas que nada más trabajamos para la pura renta y a veces ah, no tenemos para veces hasta para comprarle cosas extra a los niños. Una de dos, pagamos renta o pagamos este o nos compramos eso. O a veces hasta sin comer. A veces a los niños se les antoja algo y le que tenemos que decir que no hay dinero. ¿Por qué? Porque tenemos que pagar renta. Y a mí eso me da mucha tristeza porque yo no soy la única. Hay varias familias que pasamos por esto. Y más con esto de la pandemia nos vino a molar la vida, la verdad. Gracias. Gracias. Good evening, council members, mayor. My name is Rosa Ramirez, and I'm a Santa Ana resident. I'm here in support of 85B. I was uh, one of the people who went out and got their signatures with Latino Health Access and TUSA. And uh, it's, uh, we're here to, to ask you for this. We, uh, I, we would have gathered the signatures if it were not for the pandemic. This is the second time we are doing this because the city council did not put a rent control measure in the uh, ballot the last time. I would like to have a rent control because we are paying uh, more and more rent. Every six months, we're, they're increasing our rents. It's not fair that two or three people are living in a one or two bedroom apartment. We're all piled up and it's not fair that this is happening. We need rent control. So we're asking you to approve 85B. People are working just to pay the rent. We can't pay for things for our kids. Uh, we have to decide between uh, paying rent or eating. Our kids may want something and we have to tell them we can't buy it for them because we have to pay the rent. So many families are in this uh, uh, bad situation and we need rent control. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 523. Please dial star six to speak. Then you may proceed with your comment. Caller with the last, oh, you may proceed to speak. Oh, oh. okay, I uh, can you hear me all? <laughs> yes, we can hear you now. Oh, okay, uh, thank you, hello, sorry, this is uh, Manny Escamilla. I'm just uh, calling in uh, on two items. So uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, for, for, for you know, taking the time uh, to, to do all this. Um, so I, I guess, uh, yeah, just to start off, I uh, yeah, did want to uh, reiterate my opposition to the uh, WHO uh, amendment. So I believe that's item 11C. Um, you know, I wrote a little op-ed with uh, my fellow Santa Ana resident, uh, Peter Garcia, just kind of outlining the reasons we believe that the decision you are, are making today is both bad policy and bad politics. Um, you know, the, the way that we look at it is, you know, any kind of housing or development that needs to be done in the city is going to require uh, political buy-in from more than one constituency group. And right now it seems to all kind of be swinging in the, the direction of market rate development, which uh, again, you know, maybe for, for your own uh, calculation seems to be the, the right thing to do. Uh, but I, I think what we're doing here is actually uh, building up opposition to all developments in the city. Um, so I know that there are gonna be some folks uh, that will basically see all new development as really being um, more, you know, more um, on the side of displacement rather than the side of housing production. I think we, we can have a reasonable argument over um, you know, the metric set as to whether or not it you know, helps out uh, in kind of lowering rent. I think that's a reasonable debate to have in urban planning. Uh, but what we really are seeing though is that you're not even taking into account the hundreds of people that have um, you know, vocal, um, vocally opposed uh, these changes. So you know, just, uh, I'd like you to take that into consideration. Um, and along the same route, uh, you know, really, uh, looking to extend the opportunity to have uh, rent control here in the city. Uh, I know in each of our kind of political biographies, we talk about being good Democrats, uh, about how our family members or, um, let's see, uh, political legacies that were uh, there with the farm workers and, you know, Cesar Chavez were here today, we would all kind of rally around him. Um, but, you know, Dolores Huerta is uh, in support of rent control. Um, if Cesar Chavez was alive today, he would be as well. Um, I think he would be here marching uh, with the people that are calling in. 
And it's something to take into consideration as to what uh, constituencies we prioritize when we make public policy. So uh, I just wanted to leave you with that and I uh, hope that you do reconsider uh, the position on 11C and on 85, uh, sorry, I, I forget which uh, 85 item it is, but on the rent control uh, measure as well. Okay. Thank you and uh, good night. Thank you. Caller with the last three numbers, 489, please dial star six to speak, then proceed with your comment. Caller with the last three numbers, 489, please dial star six to speak, then proceed with your comment. I, uh, I have spoken already, thank you. Oh, thank you. Mayor, that was the last caller. We have no other callers. All right, uh, so with that, I thank you, Madam Clerk. And now I want to direct our attention. I believe we're now going to go on to the uh, consent calendar. Are there any items that council members want to pull or abstain on? Mr. Mayor, this Mr. is Mayor? Uh, Council Member Penaloza. I'd like yes, to Council pull item 22A. All right, Council Member Penaloza. Council Member Becerra, I think I heard you speaking as well. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to go ahead and pull item 11D. Thank you for that. Any other items? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yes, I'd yeah, like to. Um, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. If you could pull item 11A, and I am going to be a no on 11C. Okay. Any other items? If not, I would entertain a motion on the balance. Move the balance, Mr. Mayor. This is Jose Sawyer. Diego, second. A roll call vote on the balance, please, Madam Clerk. Council Member Becerra. Yes. Councilmember Mendoza? Yes. Councilmember Peñalosa? Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento? Yes. Councilmember Solorio? Yes. Mayor Potem Villegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. So, what is the first item that, uh, that we would, uh, that was pulled, Madam Clerk? 11 A by Councilmember Sarmiento. Please go ahead, council member. Yes, thank you. Um, if I could have the Madam City Attorney come on and I just had some questions on this. Yes, I'm here, ready. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. So a question on uh, just uh, a couple of things, section 2-327. Um, I know there's some changes there that were made. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that these were changes that um, were already reflected in the charter and you're, are these basically just gonna be now codified in the municipal code? Yes, so what this agenda item is, it's a follow-up from a previous charter amendment. Um, all that we did is- Sonia, I can barely hear you. I'm Sorry. not sure if anybody else can hear you, but I must have a bad now? signal. No, no, it's not audible. If you can speak up, Sonia, or do something, you're not audible. Okay, I, yes, I'll be right. Council member, is that better? Council Much member? Better. Okay. So, yes, this item is simply a cleanup from a previous charter amendment where um, the city council, the city council proposed to the voters removing language from the charter and placing it into your municipal code. All the language that you see underlined in your draft ordinance is language that came directly from the charter. There are sections of this um, ordinance what, with, that, apply to, that apply to certain departments where they may have added provisions to their various commissions for efficiency purposes or for greater transparency. But all of the other language is lifted directly from your former charter. Got it. So, um, so just for clarity, uh, just for clarity here, uh, the city council can direct any personnel matters directly to the board uh, without the consent of um, 
for approval of the HR director or that city manager. Is that correct? Well, the, um, the proposed charter language does allow, the proposed municipal code language does allow the city council to send matters directly to the personnel board, but you would still be subject to the other civil service rules, a memorandum of understanding that you have with your bargaining units, and any of the powers of your city manager that are set forth um, in your municipal code. So yes, you can do that, but we'd also need to make sure that whatever you directed to them was in compliance with all, those, all of those other regulations. Well, understood. And then that's, that's sort of outside just of our municipal code, it's state law as well. So um, the, other, uh, the other question I had was um, on the criteria for who is on the personnel board, I saw some criteria that was pretty specific to um, folks who don't have uh, uh, government experience. Um, what's, what's the spirit or intent behind that? I think the, um, I would let staff speak to that in particular, but just a reminder to the city council, you may recall that several years ago, we did have issues with discipline that was um, recommended from the departments at a professional level and supported by the city manager. And we did have several of our um, actions overturned by the personnel board. Um, it was in relation uh, to some high-profile cases, and the council was very concerned that those disciplinary matters had been overturned. We, at the time, had a couple of, of personnel board members who did not have personnel backgrounds and maybe a, a clear understanding of what, what they were actually being asked to do. Got it. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and I do recall those, um, those, uh, those matters. But now I think we also have special counsel that staff the personnel board, correct? We do. The personnel board, um, under the rules, are is the secretary or the um, staff, human resources off direct department manages that, and then they do have special legal counsel. Great, thanks. Now, my other question is in, is on section two dash six four two. There's some language um, when it comes to emergency services that um, I believe includes some. Uh, I guess uh, some definitions of what's considered a disaster or um, you know a, con a condition of emergency, and it says other than conditions resulting from a labor controversy. So can you can you tell me why that um, language is in there in both the section for emergency or local emergency and the state of emergency? Um, I can probably we probably took that language directly from the state of California's Office of Emergency Services and their um, the state statutes. We would not have added any definitions in there that were not consistent with state law. Got it. Um, and I know that we've exercised, um, you know, the uh, director of emergency services, um, who we designated as our city as the city manager, and she's had to. Uh, you know, issue emergency orders, especially given some of these um, exigent circumstances uh, as a result of the pandemic. And so that's been, I think, helpful when, when she's had to move quickly. But I just noted some language in section uh, 2 644, um, subsection 2, that says that um, uh, the director basically defining the powers and duties of the director of emergency services. Um, they can, you know, issue these um, proclamations and these orders um, if the city council is not in session um, versus, um, you know, and, and maybe that the language is preferable to say if the council is unable to be convened. Um, I think, uh, you know, council is not in session often or, you know, or, or we're, we only meet, you know, once every two weeks. We can meet on a special basis or when we decide to convene. but. Is maybe is there a better use of language, Madam City Attorney, that you would um, suggest, or is this something that um, was discussed when, when the amendments were being drafted? No, I think I believe again that language came comes directly from the um, from the state emergency um, statutes. However, I understand your issue that you would want to make sure that the city manager or the, the director's authority only comes into play if the city council is unable to meet, and um, we can make that change. Great. With that, uh, I'm supportive, and I'll go ahead and move the act. Second. Any other comments? Is there a second? Um, second by Solorio. Council Member Solorio seconded. All right. 
Uh, if there's no more comment, then roll call vote, please. Council Member Becerra? Yes. Council Member Mendoza? Yes. Yes. Council Member Peñalosa? Yes. Council Member Sarmiento? Yes. Council Member Solorio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Vegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Next item, Madam Clerk. 11D, pulled by Council Member Becerra. Council Member Becerra, please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Under the parliamentary procedures that our council has adopted by resolution, I would like the opportunity to re reconsider the vote that I took at the previous city council meeting regarding the overriding of the Orange County Airport Land Use Commission's determination of inconsistency for the project before us that required five votes, of which I was one of those five votes. Based upon my request, I understand that this item will be brought back to our September 15th council meeting in two weeks. Thank you for that. Uh, any uh, comment, uh, Madam City Attorney, is what are you saying is correct? Um, under your rules of parliamentary procedure, any one of you who votes in the affirmative may um, ask for a reconsideration. With that, we'd be required, because of the rules of the Brown Act, to put it on your agenda in two weeks. Okay, so this is something we don't vote on. We simply, based on the request, uh, uh, adhere to the request, in essence, and bring back the entire package in two weeks. Is that Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, that would be the process. And in two weeks, you could actually um, vote on the motion to reconsider and then take action if that motion passes. All right. So, so be it then. Um, uh, well, Mayor, I have a Mayor Polito, I have a question. It's Council Member Mendoza. Sure, go ahead, Council Member. Yes, uh, my concern was for that project was the identification for the city of Santa Ana, and um, I wanted to be sure that the city attorney has um, gone over that and that there is no liability to the city of Santa Ana on this project. Can you speak to that, uh, Madam City Attorney? Yes. Um in the in the packet this week and it would be continued for two weeks if you move forward with this request for reconsideration there is an indemnification agreement um, with the actual applicant the name of the applicant aramis um, investments and they have in addition to the condition of approval that requires an avigation easement they have provided the city a full indemnification agreement which will be recorded against the property so since we have that already uh do we need to continue it or can we hear the the matter now and take a vote and because there is a request for reconsideration that automatically trumps and it moves this item to the agenda in two weeks so we're just voting on a continuance and not on the project we're not actually voting we're not voting i see it when, when there's a request like what was made by councilor becerra um it automatically uh, occurs. It's not a vote by the council. He has the right to request for reconsideration, and that's what he's done. I see. Thank you for the clarification, Mayor. No Peter. worries. No worries. All right, so with that, what's the next item, Madam? Mr. Mayor, I, I have a question on that. Okay, go ahead, Councilman Sarmiento. Thank you. Um, Madam City Attorney, so, um, I'm just kind of curious. I guess you are you're using Robert's rules of order here by making a request for reconsideration. It has to be done at the uh, meeting immediately following the vote that was taken. So it's being done at the proper time by somebody in the majority. Why wouldn't we take up that matter for a vote at this hearing presently? Um, because it was not agendized under the Brown Act. So members of the public would not have had an opportunity to know you were doing that. One way potentially to do this, um, as we've done it in the past, is your options have been um, one of the following. A council member can make the, the request for reconsideration at the council meeting, as is done today. 
Um, sometimes a council member can make that request under 85A. If it's made as an 85 item, then that is posted on the agenda and they can actually take a vote on the motion to reconsider. But in this case, the um, okay. question is being raised here in public for the first time, and so you cannot vote on that until it's agendized in two weeks. So what is the status of the item as it stands now? So right now it's in limbo between first reading and second reading with a potential motion for, con for, a, for a matter to be reconsidered uh, at the following meeting, correct? correct. Um, let's just assume that mo that motion fails. What can be taken up at the following meeting? Are we back to first reading or are we, do, we, uh, do we agendize a second reading at that point? Um, so you would just, con you would agendize the motion for reconsideration um, and you would also include this item as the second reading. If that motion is successful and the item is um, affirmed as it was two weeks ago, then you would simply conduct your second reading and move forward. If the motion for consideration turns out to overturn any of those decisions, then the second reading wouldn't be necessary. It would become moot. Okay, so you lost me a little bit. The only thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest is that as the matter for reconsideration is agendized for consideration at the next meeting, I would as well put the second reading as an alternative in the event that the motion to reconsider fails we can simply go ahead and back to where we go back to where we are today um, at the following meeting and not have to waste time to have to re-agendize a second reading at that, that point. That, that is correct, what you me, just um, stated, uh, that is correct. Isn't that automatically what you already said, Madam City Attorney? Yes. I understood you earlier say that. Yes, so that's what will happen. It will be the motion for reconsideration and this item will appear exactly as it appears today. Got it. I just want to make sure, Mr. Mayor, that this is explicit and expressed and we don't have another matter that's going to you know, hold matters in abeyance. I, I, I don't understand this, but, um, but look, I just want to make sure we expressly notice things. That way we don't have an excuse to say, oh, we forgot to notice something and, and we have to go and, back and, 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 and waste, and waste and more time. So, And I've been assured that that would be the case. So with that, Let's go on to the next item. Madam Clerk, what would that be? 22A, pulled by Councilmember Peñalosa. Councilmember Peñalosa, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 22A is to award a purchase order in the amount of $169,000 to Matthews Specialty Vehicles, Inc. for a Ford Transit van to be used as a bookmobile for the Santa Ana Library. I just wanted to pull it to, to recognize uh, Brian, our library director, and, uh, th and public works, because I know they also um, had had a lot to do with, with securing this. And, um, you know, this is exciting. We're, we're, we're officially buying the bookmobile, which is, you know, it, it, I'm so happy to, to, that it's coming back. I, you know, remember going to the bookmobile when it come to Washington Elementary, when I was elementary on Fridays, and just walking into that bookmobile and the smell of the books was like we, it was a weird uh uh exciting thing to to walk into and and i'm a nerd and so i'm excited that this is coming back with some upgraded technology um experiences for kids as well and uh i i just uh had uh, again thank you uh library director and city manager and everyone involved for bringing this forward i just had one question with uh with the this, with the choice of vehicles, uh, just of course, I immediately went to Google Images when I saw the staff report and was looking at at the that the transit van, you know, online to see what what it looks like and to get a general idea. And to me personally, it just looked a, a little small. Uh, is this some, uh, Mr. Library Director? Is this something that where you're going to be able to walk inside? Um, is it? I, I just. Couldn't understand the size dimensions of the van inside. What, how much are we going to be able to use use it for? Uh, can you talk to that, please? Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Council Member. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Um, yes. Uh, so this particular vehicle is really meant to house books and technology. And what happens is, and, is, and this is how many public libraries are doing bookmobiles now, especially in urban areas and suburban areas, is that the services actually happen out front of the bookmobile. So this bookmobile will have 
a motorized canopy that comes out, LED lighting around the vehicle. It will have a speaker system to, to make announcements, play movies. Uh, we can bring TVs out for programming, gaming, whatever we might want to do. But the great thing is, is that um, it has room for tables, chairs inside that will come out. So a lot of the programming happens out front of the vehicle with all the power, computers, technology, whatever we might want to do, robotics, uh, virtual reality, 3D printers, stuff like that. So it's really all out in front. There's plenty of power there. The vehicle will have a generator there. Um, and just meant to serve the public where they are. Um, there is room to come on, but we, we do pack it with books and technology, and everything's on rolling carts, and it just comes right out of the vehicle. It'll have a technology cart. It'll have book carts for a uh, collection to come out, labeled for kids, teens, um, focusing definitely on youth, but people of all ages as well. Oh, so that's super cool to hear. Um, so it, it would be like we, I know we discussed a couple months ago when I, when I, uh, we had that meeting. So it would be most of the programming would take place outside of the van, but it would be uh, the book, the various different bookcases and technology that would be brought out by whoever is is. Uh, would it be a one one person? Uh, uh, operated van. It's oh. it's two it's uh, two people. It's okay. a driver and a a passenger, which would be library staff. We also have the capability if we need to bring out lots of extra supplies. We're going on a we're going to do a big program or event. We have the ability to follow with a van or something like that to bring to bring uh, additional you know material supplies etc. I would add even if you do get um, a, a large bus, there's still not very much room even on those large buses. Right. There's even if you have a 40 foot bus that requires a commercial driver's license, there's typically a small path up and down that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there's still not much room for kids to do or to participate in programming on those vehicles. So having the smaller vehicle uh, allows us to kind of navigate around, get into yeah. smaller spaces, and still do all the great programming that a 50-foot large vehicle would, would be able to do. And, and I think now even given uh, COVID, COVID-19, where we don't want to be in enclosed spaces, I mean, that's I think right. that's, that's proper, and, and it's good that we have that ability to operate outdoors, uh, which is exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, what is the timeline after, you know, approval for this? We I doubt will, that we won't approve it. Um, but uh, what, what are we looking at in regards to? Uh, we will immediately start reaching out to the vendor and uh, working on the vehicle. Um, a part of what I've done prior to this is uh, solicit community input and feedback. I had a survey, it's still up on the website for anybody who wants to take it for what they would like to see in their bookmobile. The entire community t uh, took it. A lot of people from the community uh, took the survey, got a lot of great responses, and what we heard overwhelmingly is youth and kids and teens was the demographic that people really had an interest in serving in this, in this community. So it, it's really exciting. We're going to get started right away, and depending upon timeline with the vendor and making the vehicle, the good thing is, is that Matthew Specialty Vehicles it specializes, and they have done bookmobiles for um, lots of public libraries around the USA. I believe they've done one for uh, Queens uh, Public Library in New York City, and, and just a lot of other jurisdictions. So they are a seasoned uh, vendor. We're glad we got them um, as a part of our process, and it's going to be a great service for the community. So we'll get started immediately. That's great to hear. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. if, if there's room somewhere out of cannabis funds, I mean, I'd be all in support to buy two. I mean, just, just rip the band -aid, Let's just get it done. But, you know, For put, sure. put that out in the universe, you know, and, and Absolutely. get that yeah. ball rolling with the city manager. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Thank you, Brian. All right. Any more comments, council members? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, just a brief one, uh, j just to f follow up on uh, council member Peñalosa's last comment. Uh, this city is definitely big enough for more than one of these bookmobiles, uh, but I do get that it's kind of uh, a pilot program, if you will. But maybe as they're starting to like build it and you're starting to create your program, then maybe we could figure out: do we want uh, order a you know a second, third, or fourth, or or, or variation of it? Uh, but there's a lot of excitement uh, and, and, and interest, and you know, there's still 
Wi-Fi needs and just knowledge needs. So I think uh, this is a big hit. Depending too on the source of funding, uh, I'm hoping maybe there might even be a little bit of Measure X in there, so we could say funded by Measure X or funded by uh, you know the, the, the youth fund. Um, or whatever it might be, because on some things, particularly Measure X, we want to get people excited about what Measure X is funding, so that in the future uh, people can, uh, uh, you know, give credit to the right place. With Measure X being the voters themselves. Thank you. Additional comments? If not, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Councilmember Becerra. Yes. Councilmember Mendoza? Yes. Councilmember Peñalosa? Yes. Councilmember Sarmiento? Yes. Councilmember Solorio? Yes. Mayor Putin Viegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Next item, Madam Clerk. Public hearing item 75A. And currently, we do not have, uh, well, we may have a um, public speaker, just so you're aware. Okay. Let me go ahead and open up the public hearing. I open up the public hearing item 75A, and I want to ask the city manager if there's any uh, staff presentation on this item. Mayor, we do have a brief presentation, if you so desire, and the applicant is also on the phone. Why don't you go ahead so folks at home know what we're talking about. Go ahead and do a, the brief presentation, please. Okay. Planning Director Min Tai will give the presentation. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. This is a request for approval of Environmental Review 2017-161, General Plan Amendment and Tenant Track Map for the property located 122 North Beverly Avenue. The request is for approval of a 10-unit condominium uh, PUD project. Uh, the property is located at uh, the west side of Beverly between Washington and 11th Street. The existing land use designation is low density residential. Uh, it is being proposed to be changed to medium residential, uh, density residential uh, for not only this lot but also the adjacent property along the block on Bewley between uh, Washington and 11th Street. It is also surrounded by other multifamily residential development to the north, east, and south and commercial uses to the west. The lot is just shy of one acre at 0.87 acres. Currently it is vacant. Uh, it was formerly used as a single family residence which uh, was removed back in 2017. The, uh, as I mentioned, the project is to construct a 10 unit residential uh, condominium uh, complex consisting of duplexes and triplexes. Uh, this form of subdivision will allow for home ownership um, the unit size is approximately 16 to 1900 square feet with bedroom ranges from two to four bedrooms. Uh, the project complies with zoning requirements as relates to parking, um, common open space, and also being provided is uh, private open space. This is a copy of the site plan. To the uh, left is the commercial area. To the right is Bewley Street and north is to the top and uh, south is on the bottom. This is uh, an illustration of the open space area. The project does have about uh, approximately 2,500 square feet of a common open space. This is a, an elevation of the project. This project is being designed in a craftsman bungalow style, uh, which uses uh, natural materials such as stone, wood, uh, details with stucco, uh, there's slate tile roof, and uh, the development is uh, designed to look um, as contemporary craftsman architecture style. Another elevation of the project. The general plan amendment, as I mentioned, existing, it is low density residential RLR7. As you can see on the map, um, while the uh, density of uh, the general plan designation is LR7, uh, the zoning for the area is actually R2. 
So therefore, the entire block, including this project, as you can see on the right there, as proposed, is being changed, proposed to be changed to medium density, which will make the general plan and the zoning consistent with uh, one another, and therefore would allow for the development to occur. This is a summary of the general plan amendment. As I mentioned, uh, it will allow for the general plan and zoning uh, to be consistent with uh, one another. In addition to that, this will allow for uh, creation of a buffer zone between the uh, commercial corridor, which is harbor, uh, and uh, the interior residential area. Other properties around the area, including this block, is developed with multifamily that are also in the medium density R2 range, uh, and therefore the proposed uh, change to the land use is consistent in terms of both the general plan and the existing development pattern of the area. This is a copy of the tentative track map. Uh, again, this is a common lot subdivision to where you have 10 condominium lots and which ranges from 1,500 to 2,200 square feet and a common interest slot in which contain all of the common yards, parking, as well as open space is approximately 18,000 square feet. This will require the recording of CCNR and also to incorporate a homeowners uh, association. The project was designed uh, to comply with the city uh, development requirements, including parkings. It has a central common uh, open space area. Uh, the allowable density range and the uh, design is meeting the intent of the medium density MR15. And the project is, as I mentioned, a condominium project, which will allow for uh, subdivision and individual home ownership in the area. Uh, a, a mitigated neck deck was processed for this application. It was circulated for 30 days of public review uh, in May of this year. Uh, the mitigation measures that are involved with this project are all related to the construction. There is no uh, operational impact, uh, and the uh, construction mitigations are quite common for new development projects due to noise, soil, cultural resources, um, and biological resources. And all of these will be addressed during the construction process. Again, when the project is complete and operational, there is uh, not a requirement for mitigation. The Planning Commission recommended approval of the project with a caveat that the developer uh, go back out and reach out to the neighborhood. This project was initially uh, uh, reached out to the community back in actually 2018, in March. Um, and uh, you know the concern from the neighborhood was that there weren't any additional outreach since then uh, and that um, the project was updated uh, through the planning commission process. Initially, it was submitted for 12 units. Uh, the developer, after meeting uh, with the planning commission study, work study session, reduced it to 10. Uh, so the planning commission directed for the applicant to conduct additional outreach to the areas. Two meetings were held, one on July 28th and one on August 25th, being that we're still in COVID. Uh, the meeting was done over Zoom. It was sent to uh, all property owners within 500 feet of the area. Uh, during the meeting, uh, I think the first meeting, two, two people attended the meeting, and the second meeting, uh, four people attended the meeting with no objection to the projects. The recommendation here for you tonight is to uh, confirm the uh, Planning Commission's recommendation by adopting a resolution uh, approving the mitigated neck deck, adopt a resolution for the general plan amendment, and adopt a resolution approving the tentative track map. That concludes staff's report. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, man. Um, if this was a brief report, what's a long one like? I'm kidding, you don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. Um, council members, any questions? If not, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers? Mayor, we will um, go ahead and try to unmute each caller to see if they want to speak on this item. Caller with the last three numbers. Yeah, I know the applicants there. If we, if we have any questions, we'll call on the applicant. Uh, if not, uh, we may not need to bring them forward. But go ahead, Madam Clerk. Okay, caller with the last three numbers, 068. If you would like to speak on public hearing item 75A, please dial star six to speak, and you may proceed with your comment.
caller with the last three numbers, 068. Please dial star 6 if you would like to speak on item 75A, public hearing item. Last three numbers, 292. Oh. Mayor, that's all the numbers we have. We just only have the consultant and the applicant. All right, online. no worries. I, I, um, Madam Clerk, do you have any written communications on this? Yes, we do. No, my apologies, Mayor. We did not receive any written communications on this item. All right. So with that, I'll close the public hearing and bring it to council. Uh, is there a motion of a, for move approval? The, move the item, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, this is Councilmember Becerra. Second. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think this is a great infill project, and I'd be happy to make a motion to adopt the resolution adopting the MND, approving the general plan amendment, and approving the tend of track map as conditioned. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? A second. Solorio. Second. Um, Mr. Okay. Mayor, this is Councilman Penaloza. I just have a, a, Go ahead, please. a quick comment. Uh, also, just very uh, uh, happy to see this type of project, you know, come into a, a place that's been had a vacant lot uh, for a long time and uh, happy to see a nice development that's going to provide ownership to, to Santa Ana residents and the ability to buy. Uh, just wanted to see if maybe they could buy the vacant lot across the street and build another 10 there too so <laughs> um but, but with that, that can be your next motion <laughs> that'll but, be the uh, next motion it's a good pitch comments? good pitch no that's it it's just just uh vote. happy to see this roll call vote please roll call vote madam clerk count council member becerra yes council member mendoza yes council member peñalosa Yes. Council Member Sarmiento? Yes. Council Member Solorio? Yes. Uh, Mayor Potem Vegas? Yes. Mayor Pulido? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Next item, Madam uh, Clerk? Item 85A from Council Members Becerra and Peñalosa supporting. About the item. All right, let me turn it over to Councilman Vicente Peñaloza, please. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to begin my comments tonight by thanking our uh, District Attorney Todd Spitzer for taking the time to um, call into our council meeting and provide a great summary of Proposition 20, which will appear on the November ballot. As uh, Mr. Spitzer described during his comments, this proposition is comprised of various criminal justice reforms that include expanding the list of violent crimes for which early release is not an option, such as the rape of an unconscious person, assault of a peace officer, and trafficking a child for sex, uh, requiring an inmate's entire criminal history to be considered when deciding parole, and not just their most recent offense. Basing parole solely on an offender's single offense has resulted in the release of inmates with violent criminal histories onto our city streets. Uh, also allowing for the collection of DNA for certain crimes that were reduced to misdemeanors as part of Proposition 47. And multiple studies have shown that the collection of DNA from theft and drug crimes have helped solve other violent crimes, including robbery, rape, and murder. And finally, addressing the significant increase of serial theft that we have seen since the passage of Prop 47 back in 2014. Prop 20 will allow a person who is caught stealing items with a value of 250 or more for the third time to be charged with a felony. Businesses in our city have suffered millions of dollars in losses since Prop 47 passed. Because Prop 47 currently prevents uh, thefts of items with a value of under $950 to be eligible for being charged as a felony. Prop 47 removed a judge's ability to impose court ordered drug rehabilitation programs to help those serial offenders to turn their lives around. Prop 20 will once again empower judges to impose court-ordered drug rehabilitation program. This proposition will not put more people in prison, as some might have said, 
but rather Prop 20 ensures that violent criminals are not released early. Prop 20 will actually go a long way to help making Santa Ana and California safe. So with that, I would like to ask my colleagues to join the bipartisan coalition from across our state that is supporting Prop 20, and let's have our staff prepare a resolution on behalf of our city council to formally endorse Proposition 20. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Councilmember Peñalosa. I know you co uh, yeah. requested this. Uh, Would you want to make comments? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you uh, to my colleague, Councilmember Becerra, for joining me in, on this effort, and as well as uh, our district attorney, Todd Spitzer, for, for make, taking the time to phone in and support. Uh, I, I, you know, was interested in bringing this forward because, um, you know, this is a ballot initiative that would amend several criminal sentencing and supervision laws that were passed between 2011 and 2016. I won't uh, mention the detail as my colleague covered that pretty well, but this is important. You know, I, every morning I wake up d uh, daily to dozens of messages, uh, Facebook tags, and uh, emails from our constituents asking, you know, why isn't the Santa Ana police doing anything? Why isn't the police doing anything? Why isn't, the, you know, when, when these crimes are, are reported? And a lot of the times it's like, you know, the, the, our police department has really had our, their hands tied when it comes to legislation that comes down from the state. And this is Prop 47, Prop 57, AB 109 has really made it hard for law enforcement agencies across the state to, you know, enforce laws and keep, you know, uh, people off the streets that would go and steal your cars or whatnot and other grand theft. Um, so this is important for us. It's, I think it's, it's, a, it's important for us to take a position and, and endorse this bill, uh, Proposition 20. So I'm happy to also support it, and I would ask that my colleagues uh, join us and, uh, you know, for the safety of our residents uh, moving down, you know, into the future. This is great for, for us to consider. Thank you for that. Any other comments, council members? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is uh, City Council Member Jose Solori. I'm too very much in support of this. I've been watching a lot of the public safety measures over the past uh you know, 15 years or so, and there were some um, errors made, I think, in, in some of those past things, uh, both uh, through legislative action as well as through, um, through, through the ballot box, and this will fix them in, in a very sensible way. So I'm, I'm, I'm very supportive uh, and involved with the statewide effort and local efforts in supporting uh, this measure. And in addition to doing a resolution, because I do think that this uh, measure is very important to uh, – not just California, but San Ana as well. I'd like to see if uh, maybe our public information officer could do a, a, a press release uh, showing the council support. If there is a um, majority uh, will there, because uh, it's important to keeping California safe. That's what it's called, the Keeping California Safe Initiative, but it will also help keep Santa Ana safe. Uh, so it is very imp important. And uh, I think on the whole, violent crimes uh, haven't been going up, but a lot of property crimes, and this would uh, help with, with that as well. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Council Member Spinalosa and Becerra for bringing this forward as well. Thanks. Thank you. Additional comments, Council Members? This is uh, Council Member Mendoza. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I am very much uh, in support of this um, issue. Uh, I know that the ballot initiative would amend several criminal sentencing and supervision laws that were that were passed between 2011 and 2016. And uh, when our assembly um, voted on this, I don't think that they imagined the consequences of such a, such a law. So I am glad we're taking um, measures and supporting the proposition that will rectify that uh, wrong and I, I will be voting in favor of this, uh, this uh, thank you for that uh, other comments mr. mayor uh, this is member Tim Villegas Go just, ahead. just want to uh, thank the uh, two gentlemen for bringing this forward I think it's very important that we support this and uh, I'm, I'm personally am happy to um, support this 
as uh, public safety is such a, a, a very important uh, thing for people in our city because the city is very, very active. And uh, again, thank you to uh, both of them. Uh, additional comment, if not, um, I'll ask the clerk uh, to call the roll call, please. Uh, Mayor, this, this, this is an 80. Item. Yeah, it's not a voting item. Oh, it's not? It's, okay. it's oh yeah, that's right. That's 85. right. So obviously you got uh, good direction from, uh, from the council for staff. So next item, Madam uh, Clerk. 85B, this is from Council Member Sarmiento. Please go ahead, Councilor Sarmiento. Yes, thank you. Um, this is uh, a matter that many uh, of our residents spoke on both at this meeting and prior and have sent written correspondence and support as well. Um, uh, you know, I know a lot of the speakers uh, discussed the merits of the um, initiative, uh, which was rent control, but I think for many who uh, may not be supportive on this council for that. I'm asking that everybody kind of just take a step back and look at what's been done. And so if my math is correct, I think in 2018, uh, close to 9,300 signatures have been gathered. And uh, at the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic hit, close to uh, 3,000 um, signatures were gathered. Uh, that to me, if my math is correct, were somewhere in the neighborhood of 11, between 11 and 12,000. Um, you know, I know that uh, the threshold for something to make it on the ballot is um, is approximately 10,000 signatures. So um, I know that in 2018, uh, it was very close to being placed on the ballot, except uh, that the uh, the signature threshold was missed by uh, about five or six hundred. Um, signatures. Um, really, to me, this speaks to, and I'm getting, uh, Madam Clerk, I'm getting an echo here. Is there, um, there's something wrong with the signal? Can, or can you hear me okay? I, I, mean, I, people should mute except for yourself. Please continue. I agree. Thanks. No, I think the, the, the echo is gone now. So thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. Um, for me, you know, one of the lessons learned during the whole discussion on 2525 North Main, when uh, signatures were gathered, um, there were challenges and there were there was discussion and eventually a reconsideration of the underlying merits of that um, of that uh, uh, item. Uh, what it did show me was that when there were uh, as many residents, and we're talking, you know, in excess of uh, 10,000 residents, uh, regardless of what the merits are people in our city feel strongly enough about a subject matter item that they went out of their way to gather signatures, walk neighborhoods, um, compel people and describe to people what the issue item was and convince them to vote based upon those arguments. So to me, our job uh, is, is to listen to residents and then when they reduce those uh, comments and when, we, when they reduce those opinions to writing and sign their name to it and affix their name to a, to a, to a formal initiative and petition, that is the most sacred democratic act. Um, there is no uh, more important sign of uh, patriotism than going out and feeling strongly enough about an issue to go and try to convince your neighbors uh, and fellow voters to support this. So to me, this is something that let's just step back from where we are. Um, and whether you disagree with the underlying subject matter or not, this is obviously this is obviously significant enough to so many of our residents and voters in the city that it should be placed on the ballot for consideration of all of us and all the voters in the city. So my uh, uh, comment and my request of my colleagues is that we uh, have we give direction to our staff to bring back an item for us to consider to either extend the time. Uh, to allow for additional signatures to be gathered because, but for this pandemic, I think that uh, the signatures were, the signature gatherers were well on their way once again um, to, to satisfy even more um, signatures on that petition. So uh, that would be one. And also in the alternative to consider uh, uh, allowing this city council to place it on the ballot if that's still feasible and that if that's still possible based upon the deadlines and the timelines available. But that would be something for us to consider at the very least at the following council meeting. 
Um, that is my request. I think that um, others who spoke, I want to thank um, people who've not only taken the time to speak, but also to, again, uh, send public comments in writing and correspondence. Uh, this is, again, something that we should almost remove ourselves and not look at the underlying merits and realize that there are so many of our neighbors that feel uh, strongly about this that we should give them their opportunity to present this to the voters and uh, not let us decide, but let the voters decide on this issue. So with that, um, uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Other comments uh, from council members? <coughs> this is council member Mendoza. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yes, as we heard earlier, uh, the callers, they are asking us um, not to be favorable towards one particular group. And when we vote, to vote carefully and take into consideration the benefit to the entire city or larger groups and not just special groups. So in my um, thinking about the, in whether to support or to not support, I'm also thinking about the other group, the other people uh, who are the property owners. Uh, they also have a considerable investment in our city. And if we make it tough for them, they may just uh, sell properties and then we won't have that uh, housing available for our low income residents. And I understand their position because it is uh, difficult trying to live uh, in a single room where there's uh, several uh, family members. And I know that this can be rectified by several means. And that's one way uh, that I want to point out to our constituents that we are working and uh, I, I'm, I hope I'm speaking on behalf of the, the rest of my colleagues. We are working together to benefit our constituents, we're not separating or categorizing or giving more favor to the developers, to the property owners, or to the signature gatherers, or to anyone who's opposed to um, other issues that we have before us, not just today, but uh, throughout regular business for a uh, city. Uh, my perspective on this is that we are making the best decisions with the information that we have. And when we vote for, for example, on projects uh, such as the one that's coming up before us, we need to, to show our residents that this is a benefit to them as well as to the developers, as well as to our city, as well as to our low income residents. And how do you act? I mean, how, how do they benefit? Well, many of those people who will be working, the laborers, they're going to be hired to work at a higher, a higher wages. That means that those families, uh, these, um, uh, these men and women who are working on these projects, they can afford better living um, uh, um, areas, better conditions, so that they're not stuck in, a, in just a, a single family room with 10 of them. And the other thing is that the same project will also leave the city with revenue. We're collecting the ordinance fee from the developer and that money, it, and it means millions, millions of, of dollars that's going into the city, call, city um, fund so that we could provide uh, things such as what our residents are looking for, housing low income housing. So all of this comes, it falls upon each other. It's a puzzle. So if we're working for developers, we are working because it's going to benefit our, our residents. And for this rent, rent control, it, it's going to be a very tough issue because then that, that's telling our property owners that um, they're going to have to do something about their properties and won't get the, the, the proceeds or the profits from their properties 
in order to maintain their properties. If it gets too expensive for them, if they can't pay their mortgage because they because of rent control, they're just going to sell and leave our city. So we need to look at all that and and think about our our the long term consequences and. And personally, I'm not voting for any particular group. I'm voting for the interests of all of you. Everyone who's at home listening in, not just my ward, but all of you. And I am going to support this. I want you to get the opportunity to bring this to the voters. And, and when you do come up, I do appreciate that when you bring this to us, all of you were very professional. There was no profanity. There was no accusations. And, you know, that's the way we work together. I, I see that um, working professionally and listening to you today, I see your point of view and I feel the pain. And I want you to know that I'm not going to be, I, I, uh, you voted for me for, uh, for that reason, to represent you. And I am doing my very best and I will continue to do so. As far as um, low income housing, um, you should know that Santa Ana has already the uh, highest numbers of housing, of low income housing that we are obligated to provide by the, by the government. What we do with that money that comes from the projects, the housing ordinance, we will look at that, take that money and build new ones or um, actually update the ones that are out, outdated or deteriorating. Because what this does is that those people who are already in this low income housing, they can continue to live there at, uh, and um, the landlord will improve that with, with that money that we get from the developer. And, and you should also know that the new, new housing doesn't even go to our Santa Ana residents. What occurs is that the majority of the people who qualify for this uh, low income housing comes from outside Santa Ana. So the best w way that our residents will benefit is for us to take that ordinance, ordinance um, fee and to upgrade and update our existing housing. So today you've convinced me and I will be um, supporting this um, to allow the signatures to go um, go and gather more signatures but please be safe and um, we'll see how it goes let's see how we can all work together including the uh, the property owner thank you mayor polito uh, additional comments um i let me just step in for a moment and then let's continue talking I just want to state that I believe there's a slippery slope and I would not want to encourage, uh, you know, the council or folks to, to bring rent control to the city. And, and, and that is the potential outcome of these efforts. Uh, I, and again, you know, sometimes we just have to agree to disagree, but I, I, I just think this would be going in the wrong direction. And, uh, you know, things are what they are. We've had the pandemic. They run out of time. They'll probably be there again two years from now collecting signatures. But I, I, I don't want to be uh, part of an effort that would facilitate that. So that's, that's my input to staff. Other comments, council members? Hello? No, no comments over here, Mr. Mayor. All right, so then let's go on to the next item, I guess. Item 85C. Madam, uh, item 85C. Uh, brought from Council Member Solorio. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is uh, Go ahead, Councilman Solorio. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is um, Councilman Solorio. I just wanted to put this item on our agenda so we can uh, kind of where we to, to reassess where we're at with uh, the enforcement of anti-camping and panhandling laws, as well as to provide uh, direction to our city manager um, 
on what other type of priorities we have for policing. Uh, I know last year, July 29th, 2019, uh, the police department did put a memo together on a plan to deal with uh, anti-camping. I think you know we've had some successes in some of those areas, but other areas we're still working on. And I know there are also some areas like uh, signage uh, near at intersections that our uh, city manager is getting that pro that project. Uh, on track, so I'm excited about that because it'll reduce uh, the amount of unsafe panhandling uh, near or at in intersections. Uh, last year, you know, during the summer, it was, you know, the first summer after Measure X had passed because Measure X money was going to start to accrue beginning April of 2019. Uh, and the city really sold Measure X as doing a few key things like. Um, Staffing up our police department, which we've done, uh, addressing homelessness, which we continue to to tackle, uh, and you know a number of other priorities were in there. But I think you know the public really uh, thought and continues to think that you know they tax themselves to address uh, homelessness, and uh, you know all one needs to do is drive around town to see that we still have an issue. Uh, and it's not f just for lack of the city making efforts. Uh, it's you know a continued uh, inability by the county to address homelessness uh, countywide, and uh, for known and unknown reasons, uh, Santa Ana continues to be a magnet for a lot of the uh, homelessness. And so I'm just uh, hoping to start a conversation here with my colleagues and and staff in our police department about revisiting that uh, enforcement plan and kind of coming with a 2020 uh, version of it, and hopefully now. Uh, that we have more experience on these issues and other communities have more uh, experience on these issues that we might be able to uh, take a look at that. Uh, and then in addition, uh, you know, but related, you know, we had passed an ordinance regarding uh, large vehicles near intersections, especially if there might be uh, occupancy issues or environmental hazards related to that. So hopefully that can uh, be dovetailed into it. Uh, street racing, obviously, we continue to hear issues about that as it relates to community policing priorities. Uh, and then property crimes. I think a lot of the homelessness out there and now uh, this COVID situation and financial situation uh, uh, pressures many to go for uh, uh, you know, low-level property crimes. And so um, I continue to see that the police department is continuing to do very well in violent crimes. Uh, and so that should free up staffing to do some of these other type of uh, enforcement things. I appreciate also all the, uh, you know, coffee with the cop and, and, and that kind of thing. But I do think it's time that we uh, update that uh, enforcement plan uh, and, you know, maybe come back with a full presentation on kind of what we've done and where we're at and where we go. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, start this as a conversation with my colleagues uh, and the staff, and I'm sure we'll continue to uh, discuss this more whether here or later. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts? If, if not, we'll go to the next item. Madam Clerk, the next item, please. Item 85D, uh, brought by Council Members Becerra and Peñalosa. Okay, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is uh, Council Member Peñalosa and uh, with 85D. Uh, happy to co-sponsor this item with uh, my colleague, Councilmember Becerra, to discuss and consider directing the city manager and city attorney to draft and bring back an ordinance and place it for first reading that prohibits syringe exchange programs from operating in the city. So I just wanted to, to make it very clear that this is long overdue. I mean, I fully, completely understand the intent that these syringe exchange programs have throughout you know, the country. And, you know, do, do they uh, reduce the, the spread of hepatitis C and HIV? Yeah, probably. But when it's managed correctly and have, like we've seen over the last five years, the management of this program in our city has been a disaster and has led to numerous unintended consequences. Uh, the purpose and intent of this ordinance that I would like to bring forward is to prohibit syringe exchange programs from operating in the city of Santa Ana in order to protect the public from the health and safety risks associated with such programs and with the improper disposal of syringes, needles, and related waste. 
And I'm talking, you know, everything from mobile to, to permanent uh, across the board. We, we can't continue to enable the self-destruction behavior. Uh, this is, you know, we're the only city in the county that where it operated for a long time. And we saw the very negative and detrimental effects that it had to our playgrounds, our library, here at City Hall, uh, our parks, our bike trails. I, you know, attached to the item for those listening to 85D, there's a staff report uh, from an appendix from previous uh, discussions where over the course of two, three years, we were finding used syringes in our library bookcases, in our playgrounds, on our bike trails, inside books, in trash cans, in the, in the restrooms at the library. And it was because of this program that was operating in our city where they weren't managing it correctly. It was made up of two or three volunteers, part-time volunteers that just would set up anywhere and hand them out. So it is time that we put a stop to it permanently. And I'm proud of this and I'm happy to, to bring this forward. And I'm looking to my colleagues for support. I hope it's unanimous. You know, it, 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 we need to start looking out for the protection, the safety and the health of our constituents and, and people that live here. So with that, I'll turn it over to Councilmember Becerra. Thank, thank you, Councilmember Peloza, and I, I appreciate being able to join you on this item. Uh, and I appreciate your follow through on this because I think like many of us, we assume that after this um, whole effort had come to our doorstep a couple years back that we had something on the books that would prevent these programs from operating in our city. But you know, one thing I wanna clarify is that while the item calls this a, a syringe exchange program, what we witnessed in our city, specifically in our civic center and the surrounding neighborhoods, was that it operated more like a syringe distribution program because it wasn't one for one or three for three. It was sometimes you brought some in, sometimes you didn't. And a lot of our residents, and you'll see this on social media where they were documenting places where you just saw needles thrown throughout various places. In fact, one of our, or probably a couple, but at least one that I know of, uh, of our uh, city employees was pricked by a needle in the landscape surrounding uh, our civic center. And why? Because while I think some of the folks that came in with this program had good intentions, the reality is it had negative impacts on our community. It was not, they, they did not have the ability to operate it well. So I am very appreciative that this is being brought forward and I would definitely support having an ordinance brought back to us as soon as possible. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, comment. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor, I have comment. Yes, please uh, go ahead. I would like to thank the, uh, both the council members uh, for bringing this item forward. I'm in support and it is true that uh, I believe that the, that the folks that were bringing the needle exchange program to our city um, we're not handling it very well uh, yes it does help the people that are uh, intravenous users but then again they were discarding many of the used needles uh, just out in public and they were finding it in the library and they were finding it in the streets they were finding it in the parks everywhere you can think of and uh, that is just not acceptable and I'm very happy uh, to support this item and thank you again to my colleagues Mr. Mayor, this Any is. Any other comments, Council Members? Mr. Mayor, this is Council Member Jose Solorio. Mendoza. Uh, okay, go ahead, Council Member Mendoza. Go ahead, Ms. Mendoza. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Council Member Solorio. Uh, I, I agree that while this uh, was a program that was well intended and to help out the people who have this addiction issue, but I do agree with my fellow colleagues that. Um, the consequences and the negativity surrounding the program outweighs the benefits that uh, would have brought uh, to the the addicted uh, person. So we need to protect our neighborhoods, our children, our, our children, keep our parks clean of this uh, ri very risky, um, risky item. So I will be in support of this item as well. Thank you. Additional comments, council members? Mr. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Councilmember Penelosa. Yes, please go ahead. I, at, before, I almost forgot, I, I also want to thank the dozens of residents that emailed in support 
of this item. I know there were many residents and business owners and uh, people who, who simply work in Santa Ana that phoned and emailed in support of this item um, because they've also firsthand witness of the effects that it had on our community. So I want to thank them. And that is it. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Councilmember Solorio. Yeah, go uh, ahead, Councilmember Solorio, go ahead. Yes, uh, when uh, Councilmember Villegas and I got uh, elected uh, almost four years ago, uh, this was a big issue, and there was a lot of support for this program at the council at the time. So it was really uh, two of us leading the charge to uh, get our city staff and our colleagues and the public to understand that this program was far from perfect. Uh, and the fact that it only was here in Santa Ana and not other cities was one of the magnets to our city for homelessness and, and, and drug use and a lot of other uh, issues. Uh, and what got me going was, yeah, we were just seeing too many in our parks, by the hundreds in our library, uh, also the neighboring, I think it's the Orange County Law Center and Library. They had to start cutting back their hours and services because of syringes uh, being found. Uh, I went one weekend to see how they distribute them, and um, yeah, there were people driving in from all over, and they would turn in like a hundred and leave with hundreds more. It al I almost got even the sense that it was a commercial operation for some, uh, and then there was no privacy. And with HIPAA and other things, uh, the idea of people uh, getting in line in public, um, you know, right out at City Hall, you know, saying, "Here are my bags, and give me some." some syringes, uh, it just wasn't appropriate. I, I've always said that things like this need to be uh, within or by health care clinics so that there's proper supervision and uh, that was lacking as well. So for all those reasons, um, I continue to support this uh, policy position. Thank you. Other comments, council members? If not, um, I think you've gotten enough input. Uh, I pretty much concur with what Councilmember Solario said. Next item, Madam uh, City Clerk. M Mr. Mayor, can I just, for clarification, just so we're not here in two weeks? Without, sure, go ahead. So um, w would this be, Madam City Attorney, Madam City Manager, uh, an ordinance that would come before us in two weeks? Um, yes, sir. I believe for this one we have models to use, so that would be feasible to return in two weeks. Awesome, thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Um, yes, Mayor, now we are under housing authority. So if you want to recess our city council meeting to convene. Yeah, let me recess it and have you call the roll call, I guess, for housing authority. Go ahead. Um, authority member Becerra. Here. Authority Member Mendoza. Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Here. Author Authority Member Peñalosa. Here. Authority Member Sarmiento. Here. Authority Member Solorio. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Villegas. Here. And Chair Pulido. I am here. Uh, do I have any public comments for the Housing Authority, Madam Clerk? We do not. Okay, so I'd like to request a motion and a second for the consent calendar. There are no excused absences. Everybody's present. Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Becerra, move the, um, move the items. Is there a second? Second. Second. Roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Authority Member Becerra? Aye. Authority Member Mendoza? Yes. Authority Member uh, Peñalosa? Yes. Authority Member Sarmiento? Yes. Authority Member Solorio? Yes. Vice Chair Villegas? Yes. And Chair Pulido? Yes. Motion carries. So seven with seven. that, I will adjourn the housing authority and uh, and bring it back to the regular council meeting and uh let me first ask uh the city manager 
Is there anything that, uh, any item you would like to report out or talk about? Um, yes, thank you, Honorable Mayor. I just want to mention to you as part of our COVID-19 mobile outreach, um, one of the requests you had is that you wanted to have performance results. So we have created a dashboard that is tracking all the efforts in this area. We continue to refine it, but we do have some amazing stats. To date, we've already passed out over 70,000 face masks across our city. So if you look on your screen, you will see a sample of that dashboard. It tracks various things from care kits given out, door hangers, tests that have been completed, the number of different assistance programs that have been implemented, the amount of money that have been provided in those assistance programs. And we are making one change to increase the number that we're testing. Um, we were doing the mobile resources during the day, and it came to our attention that some individuals were having difficulty coming down in the daytime, whether it was because they were in their homes with their children that are doing distant learning. So we are going to be adding some evening mobile testing that we'll hold in our parks. And the first one is going to be at Madison Park on September 9th from 4 to 7 p.m. But for anyone who wants to view the dashboard, it is publicly accessible on our website. It's santa-anna.org backslash COVID-19 backslash data hyphen dashboard. So please take a look at it and let me know if there's anything else you would like to see on the reporting, but we will keep this updated daily for you. And that's all, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, council member comments, uh, let's go ahead. We'll take an alphabetical order. Council member Becerra, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank OCTA for uh, providing more than 11,000 free face coverings to riders that uh, ride our, um, their buses along Harbor Boulevard, the 43 and the Bravo 543 and the 66 along McFadden. Uh, really appreciate them uh, beginning their pilot program of distributing these free face coverings right here in Santa Ana, given that we do have, unfortunately, some of the most impacted areas when it comes to this pandemic. And with tonight being September 1st, we have, after tonight, 29 more days to complete the census. And while we're just barely above the state average right now, I think we can do a lot better. So I would ask everybody to please uh, fill out the census. And with that, uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for that. Councilor Mendoza, please. No comment. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you for that. No comment uh, is a good comment. Councilor Peñaloza, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just wanted to uh, thank the CARES team uh, and the CARES ambassadors that we've had uh, over the that we hired and brought on I was fortunate enough last Friday I believe to spend a couple hours with them and you know put the cares kits together and see them in action and load up the code enforcement cars and and, and go out there and set up and it was very satisfying just to, to see the look on people's faces um, when you knock on their door uh, and offer rental assistance and 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 utility assistance in much needed areas in our city. So thank you to the um, CARES ambassadors. I mean, they're doing great work uh, with, with this CARES funding. And um, also just wanted to remind everybody to visit uh, 2020census.gov to complete the, the census. I mean, if you haven't already done so, please, 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 I implore you. It will take less than 10 minutes and it'll help you, uh, it'll, you'll help have a positive effect in your community for the next 10 years. So again, that's www.2020census.gov. Thank you and good night. Council member, before you leave that subject, uh, what is the dollar figure per person in a decade? It's a large dollar figure, the rough estimate they have. I'm not 100% sure, uh, Mr. Mayor, but it's a lot. It, it's in, it's- Well, well let, let, let's bring that one back. I think it's somewhere around $10,000 per person per decade. Um, and if that's the case, look at our population. It is a ton of money. So let's double check that, and, and, uh, Councilor, but thank you for bringing it up. And, and just while we're still on it, um, 
I checked this morning at our self-response rate for the city of Santa Ana. We're currently at 68.2% um, of response. Of, of That means that only 68.2% of the city's population or households have responded to the census. Um, in 2010, we were at 676 so we've already beat 2010 numbers, but we're still at a D when you think about it. So please, please, please tell everyone you know, fill out the census. You know, if we could, we, let's shoot for an A. Um, we have 30 days to do it. Uh, September 30th is the final day to turn in, uh, respond to the census. Thank you for that. Um, Councilor Sarmiento, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody who called in and spoke and wrote on items that uh, they felt strongly about. You know, we certainly always try to um, implore people to participate and engage, and we expend uh, a lot of effort and money and outreach uh, for folks to give us direction. And when they do, um, sometimes we uh, disregard that, and that, that is a sad thing. Um, so I want to apologize to everybody who uh, uh, was ignored and uh, didn't have their voices heard tonight. And uh, that is something that, um, you know, I think goes contrary to what we all should be standing for in government. Um, but on another note, I do want to thank um, staff and the city manager for the rollout of the CARES Act efforts. I, I also did go to a couple of the sites and... Um, saw that it was done very effectively. And I think this may be a good template or role model for doing other efforts. I think going into neighborhoods, going into pockets where there is uh, densely populated um, uh, uh, residents living close to one another, I think that's the way you engage folks. I think that's the way you make folks understand and, and develop a trust with, with government. So one of the things I was gonna suggest is, well, actually two things. Um, uh, I know that Latino Health Access through the county is also doing mobile testing. We may want to coordinate schedules with them and find out where they're going to be, and maybe we can find another part of town to be in so we're not duplicating services to one neighborhood. There's plenty of areas that need the attention. So uh, to the extent we can uh, maybe share some sites uh, as to where we're going to be, and, and uh, if we don't want to disclose them to the residents because we want to pop up and get um, – and get good robust um, participation. I understand that, but just so we're not uh, both at the same neighborhood and, and again, not maybe expending the resources, the limited resources as wisely as we can. Uh, that's something I would suggest. The other one is on this whole idea of going into neighborhoods. Maybe we look at doing a mobile voting, uh, you know, van or truck that the uh, registrar of voters could look at as we're talking about, you know, uh, bookmobiles and, you know, mobile testing, why not mobile voting? Um, we know it's tough for a lot of people to get out and vote. People are disabled. Sometimes people don't have vehicles. It's very uh, difficult and we know that voting is so crucial as we know with the census, uh, sometimes getting out to people makes it much simpler. So something maybe we could compel our registrar our voters, uh, uh, registrar our voter to consider over at the county. Finally, I just wanna give a shout out to JFK. Um, transportation who is working with the Santa Ana Unified School District to roll out Wi-Fi on wheels. They are going to be sending out buses with um, Wi-Fi access points to different neighborhoods that don't have uh, internet service. And that is a very uh, good thing. And I just thought we would want to celebrate that because we know that that's something that we haven't been able to help solve. Um, and I, this, uh, this private vendor is going out of his way to go ahead and do that and provide uh, crucial, vital internet service to uh, many densely populated areas in our city that uh, are going without service and, and kids who can't uh, distance learn properly. So big shout out to uh, JFK and uh, the school district on that. And with that, those are my comments. Good night. Thank you. Council Member uh, Solario, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know, that's one more quote of yours that we'll have to remember, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no comment is a good comment. That one is going to be written down for the history Especially books. I like after it. After really long meetings, uh, right. sometimes it's appreciated. <laughs> right. But you can go ahead, Tommy. Go right. ahead. Right. I, I have to, th three quick points. Uh, kudos to uh, the city manager and the staff on that CARES dashboard. That's amazing. And that, you know, I want to continue to see more of. So thank you for putting that together. Uh, 
Also, I know uh, Council Member Sarmiento and I, and Mr. Mayor and others, have been following Latino Health access, Access's work, uh, and I know our city is working with them, and I know for the community clinics portion of it, there's going to be a partnership there, and uh, I know there'll be follow-up on that. Uh, many of our schools have started, and so I want to wish uh, all our teachers and students uh, well and, and administrators. Uh, uh, my wife, Lynn, uh, you know, works at uh, San Unified, and so wish her well. She's excited about ethnic studies and many of the other programs she's working on, and uh, my son is uh, starting at Princeton, but from Santa Ana <laughs> remotely, so I wish all the college students uh, well. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, continue to wish all the best for the children in Santa Ana that go to all our school districts uh, learning. And I know uh, uh, the city and the school districts are pushing out more programs. I just learned that the school district uh, is going to do Wi-Fi buses. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And I uh, know we're partnering with many, many things uh, with our school district as well. And uh, with that, good evening. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Villegas, please. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Have a good night and be safe. Well, I'm short as well. Let's have a good job, by the way, to, uh, you know, the whole CARES group, in particular, you know, Christine and Daisy. And Daisy's doing some extra, uh, you know, uh, for the mayor's group, and you'll see that very soon. But a great job to that whole team. And with that, have a good night.